Hello and welcome to our special day of Cup to Hook movie night. And I am actually coming on here just a tad bit late. So hopefully everyone will have remembered that we are having our special day today. We are on season three doing episodes five and six. Episode five is entitled Wanted Man, and episode six is entitled Reports of My Death. So we are getting very, very close to the end of season three. And again, for anyone that is watching the replay of this, and I will do it again once everyone gets on. I apologize for being a few minutes late. This is technically two o'clock in the morning for me, <laughs> even though it's two o'clock in the afternoon for many, being on a night schedule. It doesn't change. We're just waiting for all of our friends to join us. For our Cup to Hook movie night. And if anyone is new on here, we are watching Longmire. We are in season three and we create a blanket on Mondays that we are calling our Longmire blanket. Hello, Miss Jen. How are you? Did you have a Merry Christmas? I hope so. I apologize for getting on here just a little bit late. We didn't watch those episodes again. Uh-oh. Okay. It actually has now been probably right at a week since I watched them. Because I watched them right after we got off the last time. So. But I have the question, so that will help. <laughs> But I hope you guys had a great Christmas. We did. It's just so cold. <laughs> so cold. I just turned my tablet on and it is going crazy. I was on a different live a minute ago. That's why I was late. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. It's 2 o'clock in the morning technically for me. So I just couldn't get myself up out of the warm bed. <laughs> so I do not have a real good excuse. Our Christmas was good. Oh, that is so good to hear. It's so good to hear. Well, I hope everyone else remembered and I hope they're able to come. <laughs> right? <laughs> Automatically. She was saying, maybe if no one else comes, we win, right? <laughs> we 
by default. How was your Christmas? We had a great Christmas. Um, it was very laid back and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, I mean, over the, the break, I, I've gotten to see all of my children, except for, of course, Jonathan. He's already back in Arizona, but got to see all of them and Miss Violet. It's just growing like crazy already, and it's so surreal that she's already been here a month. I mean, and uh, it was so sweet. My youngest son was holding her, and my oldest son, you know, her father, was sitting right beside him. Um, and just watching the two of them interact with her, I think, was the best Christmas gift um, that I received this year and watching them get a little bit emotional as they held her and just, you know, touched her tiny little hands and fingers. And my youngest was just like, you know, he's known people who've had babies, but to like, he goes, know somebody that's had a baby and, you know, and then it being his brother. And then he's like the uncle and, he just, he was getting emotional and then my other son was getting emotional and then I was getting emotional <laughs> and it was just the wonders that a little baby brings. And so, um, to me, that was just pure joy in its truest form. And so what a blessing, but, but yeah, so, and then, um, it was the first time Andrew had met Violet and he was just so upset with himself that it had already been a month before he actually met her. And he's kind of a little hard on himself, but I mean, it's not like we are living in the same city. We're not far from each other, but we're still a good 25, 30 minute drive. And so um, he's got his little plate full right now. We took him... Um, actually the same day to Columbia for an interview. So I'm praying that tomorrow he will get word of when he can start training, but he's um, trying to get a security job position. And so I'm hoping and praying that it works out for him because he needs a job that's going to be able to give him stability and be able to survive through COVID a little bit better. So anyway, Jen says, that is fun. Yes, watching them. Hey, Roseanne. How are you? Hey, Kim. Glad everyone is here. We're still trying to give it a few minutes to see if everyone else is going to pop on. And if not, then we'll just start. I'm going to go ahead and get my boards. You guys, um, a couple days ago, my youngest son, uh, came over well he came and spent like three days with us so that was also a nice Christmas present even though he only lives two blocks away you know how it is when they're young they are always so busy and so um, I'm actually hoping to see him again today as he wants uh, some ham and um, <laughs> some of the fixings and to wash clothes. But anyway, he helped me in the studio. I was able to get in a couple of my little nooks and crannies and pull everything out and reorganize. And as you can probably tell a little bit, whoops, over here, all my crochet society boxes are gone um, because we actually put them in the armoire and they're actually holding different things like buttons and um, erigurumi little eyeballs. And uh, I have some pieces of cloth 
that I have been collecting for projects that I'm going to do tutorials on in 2021. Um, ribbons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so I was able to organize those in those boxes and slide those boxes in. And oh my gosh, my armoire looks empty, but it's not. It's got the same stuff in there. But being able to be in those boxes and organize it, it just made it so much more um, neat and tidy. And wow, I actually have room to put other stuff in there if I need to. So um, the point of all that was I found some stuff that I forgot I had. And so part of it is um, a couple of these dry erase boards that I use with my kids when they were young and doing homework, we would like practice math problems on it and whatnot. So you can see that they're used and they're, you know, and not the greatest of conditions, but they're perfect for keeping score on. So, so yeah. So now they're my movie night boards. And let's see. Jen says, hi, Roseanne. Roseanne said, hi, everybody. And Kim says, happy holidays. Jen says, hi, Kim. Kim says, hi, Jen. Hi, Roseanne. Roseanne says, I have to refresh. I'm back. Hi, Kim and Jen. So, Kim and Roseanne, I hope both of you had a Merry Christmas. And I hope you're warm. If I had to complain about anything, which I try not to do, um, the temperatures have dropped drastically for us, and I just can't ever seem to stay warm. So, in fact, I texted Kelly um, Platter yesterday, thanking her so much for the hat that she made me and my husband, because we've literally worn them the last two days. So, um, yeah. But anyway, in fact, I'm honestly surprised I don't have it on now, other than the fact that, like I was saying, um, <laughs> I literally just got up out of the bed because it's technically almost 2.30 in the morning for me. But, but anyway, let's see. Roseanne says, my holiday was quiet at home. But I hope it was still a good one for you. I was telling Jen a minute ago that we didn't do anything. We stayed right here. And honestly, we um, we cooked. So we had ham and all of that. And we made one day we made um, a very big breakfast meal with everything you can imagine um, that you would get if you were ordering breakfast. And we had a lot of fun doing that. But we just sat here cuddled up under blankets and watching um, movies and just hanging out together. And we played a couple games, but um, I crocheted. So I got to crochet some things that I needed to get done that I wanted to give people for Christmas gifts, even though it was Christmas day and the day after and Christmas Eve. But um, yeah, so, but I got them done. So that's the cool thing. Because they were like little small projects, but I'm hoping to show some pictures of those in the, you know, next week or two of my holiday crochet. <laughs> but it was, it was quiet and it was nice. So Roseanne says, very nice. I'm glad to hear that. And Kim, I hope you had a Merry Christmas too. I know you got some little ones. So I'm sure that they enjoyed it. And I was talking with my husband, and I think the lights that Kelly sent up here, that we're going to leave them up. They're going to stay up because I like them. Okay. And I've got the little Christmas tree whoops, right here that she made and the little alarm clock. I don't know if you can see that the little light on it is, is or that's in it is on. And then this little sign here, she also gave me that says, I love you to the moon and back. But anyway, and I've yet to see my friend 
I guess I have to look when I point <clears throat> to give her her Christmas pillow yet. So I will have to do that. That or either ship it to her. All right, you guys, we're going to go ahead and get started with who we have. So let's see. We had Jen come in. And we had Kim. And Roseanne. And did I miss anyone? I don't think so. So I'm not sure. Um, normally we have Charlie, which, you know, you guys, Charlie had a birthday. So you have to be sure if you haven't already gone on and wished her a happy birthday. And Deborah's normally with this, Grandma Anna, Kelly. So we'll see if they come in as we go. Yes, Jen, I do see that there are some lurkers. So hello to them and welcome. Glad they're with us. So, and I can see everyone is giving a thumbs up, so I appreciate that. So I, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. We are getting so close to the end of this season. And every time I watch an episode, <laughs> I say, oh my gosh, it's getting better and better. And so I can only imagine what the next three seasons are going to bring us. But, uh So just out of curiosity real quick, um, what section of the Longmire blanket are y'all actually on right now on your blanket? Roseanne says it sure is exciting. It really is like, oh my gosh. And then, oh, branch. What are we going to do with branch? I'm not sure I like the character that he's becoming. Oh my gosh, I'm getting scared for him. Oh, you're right. You're right, Jen. My bad. And I'll have to go back and fix that. You are so right. Because the next time we come back on, Jan on January 8th, that ends the season. So that is my bad. I will fix that. Um, what she said is we watch 7 and 8, not 5 and 6. And that is what we're on. So I will go back and fix that. Um, like I said, I was waking up. <laughs> Hopping on here. But my brain is awake now. And my sweet husband made me some hot coffee so I am good to go I'm getting some fuel in me so real quick Jen you have always had the grace of keeping me straight I appreciate that helping me always remember call the midwife Mike keeps me up with the score y'all are absolutely amazing I love you I I'm lost without you. Okay. So, yes, Jen is correct. We are on section seven and eight. And Roseanne says, I'm on part four because I made part 14. 
Okay, because I made another doggy sweater for my furry niece. That is absolutely fine. Hey, Trayvon, you guys, that's my adopted son right there. Love you. Do you have a good Christmas? Hope you are having a good day. I am having a good day. It's cold here, Trayvon, as you know. <laughs> of course, it may not be to you. You're young. Uh, Jen says, I haven't moved on my blanket. I'm still crocheting Christmas gifts. I understand that. I have one more uh, Christmas gift that I'm going to be working on today to finish up for someone at work. And so hopefully I will get it done before I go tomorrow night. So I understand that, Jen. Jen says, oh, good. Jen says, underdog Trey, hello. Yes, Trayvon has been friends with my youngest son, Andrew. Gosh, almost not quite, but almost their whole life. They became friends in second grade. And now they're young men. Andrew will be turning, um, oh my gosh. I've stopped and think. They're getting older. And I'm waking up. He will be 22. 22 in February. And Trayvon will be 21 in July. Right, Trayvon? <laughs> Let's see. Um, and Roseanne says, hi, Trayvon. Trayvon says, how are you doing, Jen and Roseanne? How are y'all doing today? Jen says, oh, you're so sweet. Jen says, I'm good, thanks. Roseanne says, doing good. Trayvon says, I love you too. And yes, ma'am, I hope you did as well. Listen to that, yes, ma'am. Oh, don't you love that? He's such a good, I can't call him a kid anymore. He's such a sweet young man. Oh, Trayvon, I love you so much. Yes, ma'am, I hope you did as well. I did. And sorry to hear that, that I'm freezing. That hot cocoa should warm you up. Yes, um, it isn't hot cocoa today. It is actually it is actually coffee for fuel. So, but yes, um, in fact, the cup is still very very warm. Trayvon says, "No, we are both the same age. He'll be 22 in February, as I will be in July." Okay, I always thought he was actually a year older than you. Okay. So, yes, they just, they continue to grow up. I think Violet's growing up fast. So, Andrew will be 22 in February. Jonathan, my Marine, will be 24 in March. And my oldest son will be 26 in August. Oh, my gosh. And then Trayvon, as my adopted son, will be 22 in July. Gosh, I just can remember when they were just little pups coming home from school, having snack and doing homework. Oh. Trayvon says, well, I just came to say hey and that I love you. I got to start making a video for tomorrow. Hope you all have a nice day. Yes. So in January, Trayvon. Um, is going to be, because I've already started working on those videos, will be one of the content creators that I will be recognizing. And um, he does video game videos. And like me, he's a new content creator. So he's trying to get started. So we will definitely have to go over and even though he doesn't crochet, still throw some yarn in his window and subscribe to his channel just to help support him out. So I love you, Trayvon. Have a great day. I hope to see Andrew in a little bit. He didn't come back over yesterday for ham. So he said he was coming today and to wash some clothes. So anyway, I assume that he was having fun. He said he was having too much fun 
I assume y'all were all playing your games. But take care, sweetheart. I love you. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you are ready, if you'll give me a thumbs up so I can see kind of how in sync everyone is. And going back, so we are on sec, uh, episode seven and eight, and I will correct that on the description box and the title. And let's see. Episode seven is called Population 25. And episode eight is called Harvest. I got Roseanne and Jen. And those are the only thumbs up I got. And y'all came in at the same time, actually. So I know you two are, are definitely in sync. So I was looking for episode seven, just to throw out there, we have 37 questions and for episode eight, 45. All right. So let's have fun. Let's go. I was really excited about this, um, this week. Well, I was going to tell you how many colors we're looking for today, but we'll wait and save that at the end. But I was really excited and looking forward to the fun, positive competition between you guys. So it's going to be interesting if it's just Roseanne and Jen. Because I haven't seen Kim give me a thumbs up. So I'm not sure if she's still with us. See what's going on. And I was trying to pull something up. So I apologize. And then we'll be set to go. Now that I'm using the dry erase board, I have to be careful not to put stuff on there. Okay, I got what I needed. All right. <gasps> Hello, Grandma Anna. <laughs> she said, hi, just woke up. Don't feel bad. I did too. <laughs> and I was a few minutes late starting. Roseanne says, hi, Grandma Anna. Jen says, hi, Grandma Anna. And Anna says, hugs, Roseanne and Jen, and hugs, Cynthia. Hugs, hugs, hugs to you too, my friend. All right. Getting Miss Anna on the board here. Roseanne says, how are you today, Anna? All right. 
I am trying to get situated. Because with this being dry erase, I want to make sure that even my arm is not wiping anything off. I'm so glad that we found these boards, though. All right. Anna says the weather is making it hard for me. Is it cold? Are you, is it cold where you're at, Anna? I'm going to be honest. That's what I was just talking about a minute ago. Like it is so cold. I told my husband, if we end up having a long winter, which I pray we don't, it's, I'm going to be miserable. So, I mean, he's comfortable and I am freezing, like freezing. It's unbelievable how many layers of clothes I have on. I have socks and slippers on my feet. I had been wearing the hat from Kelly. Um, but when I rolled out of bed, I forgot to bring it. But I'm okay at the moment. Roseanne says, oh, make the best of it. And it says, we got eight inches of snow and 12 degrees weather. Then I am going to. And not complain anymore. Because the coldest I think it has gotten here at night is in the um, the low 20s. So I am not going to complain anymore. I'm warm. I'm warm. Because <laughs> we have no snow and it is definitely warmer than 12 degrees. Roseanne says, wow, we had that storm last week. Yes, you guys in Ohio, I, I just, oh my gosh. Uh, Anna says, I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. We all did. We all did. That's what we, those, that was some of the stuff we were talking about before you got on. So, we did. Roseanne says, yes. Anna says, right now it is 36 degrees. I am not sure because I was sleeping. Um, Anna, real quick, while I am looking at this real, real quick. Um, on the video right now, I have an error. I'm saying five and six episodes, five and six, but we are actually on seven and eight. And I will make that correction when we get off, but that is what we're actually on. So if you saw that, do not let that throw you. Trayvon says, just got off the phone with Andrew and he says, hey, and we are actually about to make a video together, him and I laugh out loud. He also says he's happy to hear the progress you are making. Oh, my boys are so good. Thank you, Trayvon. You'll have to get him to message me if he's still coming over for ham and to wash clothes. Okay, so Anna, I still am not going to complain even though I am freezing. <laughs> it says right now at this moment it's 54 degrees here. And that's warmer than it has been. Yesterday, I think the high was like 35, 37. So it's definitely warmer out there than it was, but I'm still cold. <laughs> And I'm sure some of it's like the blood thinners that I'm on, although I'm not on as near as many because of the, the pain medicine they had me on for my back. I had to take, I had to quit taking some of those, but still I'm freezing. But you know what? I have this cute little round um, portable heater that I actually take to work. And I've been sitting in my recliner with that as I crochet to help keep my hands warm so I can crochet. But I guess I'm going to have to crochet me some fingerless gloves. So, all 
Anna says, I haven't watched them. Grandma Anna says, that's a heat wave here. <laughs> yes, my husband can't get over how cold I am, but I am. And it's the same way at work. I drive those poor, beautiful souls crazy. I'm just like, y'all, it's freezing in here. And they'll have it at 68, 70. And, you know, they're, they're, they're comfortable or having hot flashes. But me, I'm just sitting over there by my heater. just <laughs> So, but now when I'm up and running around to the rooms, to the patient rooms, I do get warm because the blood is flowing a little bit. But, you know, I'm always cold here lately, last couple of years. So, all right, let's get started, ladies. So, episode number seven, population 25. And again, we said there are 37 questions and one discussion question at the end. So, getting going. The first question is, Jen says, me too. Good. I'm so happy not to be alone. But, but you know what, Jen, with that being said, this coming year, I will be 52 years old. And I have not really gone through menopause. And if I have, I, I gracefully went through it because I have not experienced hot flashes. Now, my husband said there was a time where I would say all the time I was hot, but back then I was still working out, riding my bike, you know, doing things that, um, and I mean, I'm talking just like maybe two years ago, um, walking all the time, you know, the metabolism was just like burning and burning. But now it just seems like ever since I got diagnosed as a diabetic, um, I'm just always freezing and I don't know if that's because of the blood thinners, you know, over time, I don't, I don't know, but I am always cold. Like I don't care what time of year it is. I'm always cold, <laughs> but so I'm not complaining about not having hot flashes because I have many friends that are going through it and I really feel for them. Like they look miserable, you know? So I will take being cold gracefully and blessed, but nonetheless, it's still cold. Okay. Anna says, I breathe better in cold, but not when it is in the teens or below. Jen says, not good. Jen says, burr. Anna says, same here, Cynthia. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. But now I will tell you that if I get hot, then, you know, I don't know if it has anything to do with the diabetes or not, but I start coughing when I get really, really hot, but that doesn't happen very, very often. So only when I'm like in tight spaces with people, which definitely hasn't happened often in a very long time since COVID hit, but, but anyway, all right. Question number one, poor Mike, he's had to sit here and listen to all of this women rambling. All right. Question number one is a multiple choice question. All right. One more time. Give me a thumbs up so I can make sure everybody is in sync and ready. Because we are definitely starting right now. And I love the chat. I have missed you guys. It's so amazing what one week will do to you. Can you imagine one more week and next week we're not even coming together? Oh my gosh, it's so sad. Got my thumbs up from Roseanne. Jen and Grandma Anna. Okay. Y'all came in just a tad bit behind her, so I hope it was just a matter of getting together. Charlie! Oh my gosh, yes, Charlie is here. Happy birthday, girl. How are you? And I hope you had a Merry Christmas. So Charlie gave us a thumbs up and says, hi, everyone. And Roseanne says, hi, Charlie. Jen says, hi, Charlie. Anna says, 
Happy birthday, Charlene. Roseanne says, happy birthday. Yes, yes. I hope everyone was able to go over to the video and wish her a happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Oh, my goodness. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Charlie. Happy birthday to you. She says, thanks, everyone. And Jen says, happy birthday, Charlie. So I'm going to write Charlie's name down on the board real quick. Okay. And Roseanne says, hello. So now that we're getting more people on here, I am going to go ahead and tell you this so that it will just increase the fun of today. So the amount of colors and don't let it overwhelm you at all. Um, because remember, there is a video coming out tomorrow, but then the next um, fun day Monday section on the Longmire blanket will not come out until January the 11th. Okay. Um, after today, we won't come back to for movie night until January the 8th. That's a week from this coming Friday because this Friday is New Year's. And then the next fun day Monday segment after tomorrow won't come out until the 11th. So again, don't let that overwhelm you. We have a week that we're technically taking off. So it'll give you two weeks in between tomorrow and the next segment. But the winner today will get to pick not one, not two, not three, not even four, oh my gosh, not even five, but six colors. Again, do not let it overwhelm you, but six colors. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Roseanne says, wow, right? Oh my gosh. So, yes, six colors. Jen says, oh my, <laughs> again, do not let it overwhelm you if you're behind, please, but yes, oh my gosh, so I'm excited about these next couple sections that are coming up, so I hope that you will be too, but yeah, so, all right, and again, when we come back on January the 8th, that will be the last two episodes of season three. So, oh my gosh, you guys, we are basically halfway through Longmire. I'm excited because I'm excited to move on to our next series, but I'm also kind of like sad because I have fallen in love with these characters and I don't want it to come to an end, so it's kind of bittersweet, but exciting at the same time. Jen says, I get to take it to Florida to catch it up on January 27th. Oh, exciting. And Florida, oh my gosh, it's so warm there. You know, when we went, we were able to wear shorts and capris. And that was just only, a. I mean, that was what, Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, it's so cold now. But anyway... <laughs> That's the one thing I miss about living in Florida. So we'll definitely be careful when you go, Jen. Um, Anna says, away from keyboard a minute. Okay, see, I learned from last time, Anna. All right, so she'll be back in just a minute. So Jen says, no, it's cold right now, my mom said. Oh, wow. Which Florida does get cold, but not not your kind of cold and definitely not my kind of cold. So that's going to, are you driving while we're waiting for Anna to come back? Are you driving that? 
I mean, for me from South Carolina, it was a 13 and a half hour drive. Oh my gosh, if you're driving from Ohio, wow. Jen says, laugh out loud. I thought it was a typo. Laugh out loud. Oh, <laughs> I remembered it from last week. Um, Kelly, Kelly's the one who showed, shared that it meant away from keyboard. And then Anna came back and told us, yes, driving. Oh, my goodness. Well, my husband drove a good bit of our trip, which normally I'm always the driver. And I do so much better at driving because I get car sick so easily. But he drove most of ours and let me crochet. And oh my gosh, that was amazing. And I didn't get car sick crocheting. But I guess it's because when I crochet, I don't always have to look at what I'm doing. I'm able to look up. And so I'm able to look around and see what's going on and keep, you know, myself grounded. But, oh. And she says 16 to 18 hours away. So that means you're not that far from me either. So I know when I drive to see my girlfriend in West Virginia, it takes me six and a half hours. And then when I go to see my girlfriend, um, that's my girlfriend, Sonia, that I've known since kindergarten. And um, then my girlfriend, Jadon, that I knew when I lived in Mississippi, um, her and her husband and their wonderful family that lives in Virginia, that takes me four hours. But yeah, you're not that far from me. Okay, Anna is back. Jen says, Northwest Ohio by Toledo. Okay, yeah. So maybe, what, six, maybe seven hours from me? So. But that's one thing I am very, very excited about with my future with my husband. We one day will own a little pull-along camper fifth wheel, whatever you want to call them. And we are just going to hit the road and just, just drive. So I love it. Stop, camp out a little bit, enjoy the beautiful outdoors. Anna says, I'm in Worcester, middle of Ohio. Jen says, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, so who knows? You just never know. Of course you would know if I were coming, but yeah, that's one thing we plan to do is just travel the states. You know, there's so much to see right here in the United States. I'd love to go overseas. Um, somebody asked me if I could go anywhere outside the United States, what would be one of my top choices? And I would love to go somewhere like Ireland or Scotland, something like that. But there's so much to see right here in the United States, especially um, in the North and the Midwest, there's a lot of places that I would love to see. So, but, but right now, Arizona would have to be at the top of my list to go see my Marine. So, which I am in the process of getting all my paperwork together to go get that new ID you have to have, because I can't get on base without it. So got everything in order. Um, uh, so marriage licenses and birth certificate and my adoption papers and all of that. So I am ready to go get that done. And my husband and I are going to go ahead and invest in getting um, passports since it takes so long to get them. So yeah, I'm excited. I feel like I'm growing up. <laughs> so um, Jen says, let's go, Grandma Anna. I'll pick you up on the way. <laughs> and Anna says, laugh out loud, Jen. Traveling is hard for me. Oh, I imagine so, though, with everything going on with, you know, your hip and your shoulder. I imagine that would be uncomfortable. So, 
All right, ladies, are we ready? I mean, we have a lot of colors to win for, so are you excited? I am. Uh, okay, so we're not going to do the thumbs up again. We're just going to dig right in. Jen says, 10 hours away, Mike says. Really? From me? Wow. Well, I guess if I can drive 13. I understand, Grandma. Anna, she says, I have to drag the oxygen concentrator. Wow. Yes, my mom is on one of those. And so it does make, it does make traveling difficult. So, Well, we'll just have to come see you then. Okay. All right. Here we go. Question number one, multiple choice. What did Walt find in the woods? Was it A, trash, B, a campfire, or C, a dead body? Oh my goodness, everything's going off. All right, so we've got some bees coming in for campfire and a C for dead body. And the correct answer is B. It was a campfire. And the first person who rang in on my end with that correct answer was Roseanne. So congratulations, Roseanne. You start off our scoreboard with the first point for the day. Anna says, I haven't watched the episodes. Laugh out loud. <gasps> I hope this won't spoil it for you, though. And you did say that a minute ago. Oh. Because they're so good. Even though I messed up in the description box, they're so good. Uh, so... And you know what the exciting thing is? Is when we're done, I can go finish the season. <laughs> Does that make me bad? I'm so excited. Uh, okay. All right. Question number two. Is true or false? So I will crochet and watch. Okay. I understand. I hope you don't get upset about learning what happens in those episodes before watching them though. <laughs> All right, question number two, true or false? Walt broke a branch to find branch. <laughs> I love that question. Walt broke a branch to find branch. All right, so she says, no, I will be okay. Okay. All right, so most of the answers that came through were true, and then I had one false, and the correct answer is true. Walt broke a branch to find branch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe it's just waking up, being giddy, drinking coffee. I don't know, but I just love that. <laughs> I was laughing even when I wrote the question, but... Anyway, it is true. And the first person who rang in with that is Miss Roseanne. So we already have a leader on the leaderboard. All right, question number three is multiple choice. What did Walt say to Branch? A, are you coming to work today? B, what's for breakfast? Or C, this is your wake up call. Uh, 
Um, all right, and everyone rang in with C, and that is the correct answer. And the first person who rang in with that one was Miss Roseanne. All right, good job, Roseanne. You are on a roll. You're on that that woo woo train. All right, woot woot train. Number four is multiple choice. Sean surprised Vic with what? A, a yellow convertible, B, a yellow truck, or C, a yellow van? Jen said, everyone is answering before us. I refreshed, but it's not working. Huh. Anna says, Roseanne getting on that whoop whoop train, right? Okay. Um, everybody did ring in with A, which is the correct answer. And I don't think there's anything I can do on my end, right? Oh, no, I don't want to push that. Oh, oh, you said they're answering before I finish the question. Huh. I don't know. All right, so the answer is A, and Miss Roseanne did ring in with that, taking her to four points. Okay. Question number five is a true or false. Anna says, just have everyone wait until the question is done. No answers before question is finished, says Anna. Okay, all right. Question number five is true or false. Walt told Branch to find a shower. Jen says, no, just go. It's okay. So true or false, Walt told Branch to go find a shower. All right. Most of the answers that rang in were false with one true and the correct answer is false. He told him to go find a fresh shirt. And Roseanne rang in first. And that now takes you to five points on the board. And with a good lead. So, whoop, whoop. All right. Question number six is multiple choice. Who did Branch... Ask Walt if he had talked to. Was it A, Lizzie, B, Katie, or C, Vic? And everyone rang in with C. That is the correct answer for Vic. And Miss Roseanne rang in first. So she now has six points on the board. Whoop, whoop. And we're looking for six colors today. How about that? All right. Question number seven is multiple choice. What did Vic ask Sean to do? 
A, turn around, B, put the top up on the convertible, or C, change the channel on the radio. And everyone rang in with B. B is the correct answer. He, she asked him to put the top up on the convertible. And we have someone new with a point on the board now. And it went to Miss Jen. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> All right. The next question, number eight. Is multiple, excuse me, is true or false? Sean hit the bear in the middle of the road. True or false? Sean hit the bear in the middle of the road. And everyone rang in with false. And that is correct. He did not hit the bear. He swerved to miss it. And the first person who rang in, now giving them two points on the board, is Miss Jen. So after eight questions, we have Roseanne with six and Jen with two. Woo -woo. Jen goes, there we go, right? All right. So now we got a game going. All right, Miss Charlie, you ready? This is going to be a multiple choice question. Number nine, what two things did Vic have that Sean asked her to leave behind? Was it A, cell phone and deputy badge, B, gun and cell phone, or C, gun and map? All right, everyone rang in with B. B is the correct answer, her gun and her cell phone. Roseanne says, I waited for you to finish the question. <laughs> okay. So I guess we do need to make that decision then, whether everyone just gets to ring in when they think they have the answer or if they wait till the question is over. Because you know me, I'm all about being fair. That's what I feel, Jen. If you, when you feel you know the answer, just go ahead and ring in. Um, Roseanne says yes. I mean, that's that's how I feel because it's whoever gets there first with the correct answer. So, if you happen to just take a wild guess, you know, um, and you get it right, it counts. So, um, and the and the other thing about that is is if we happen to not be 100% in sync, then when the question finishes for someone, it may not quite finish for someone else. So it's hard to judge that. So honestly, whenever you think you have it, just ring in. And, and that's right, Jen, that's exactly what I was just saying. And she said, you could finish the question at different times for different people. And that's absolutely correct. So, yes. So just whenever you think you've got the answer, then just ring in. The only request I have, if, if you guys don't mind, is if you'll turn your caps on so that your, your letters are coming through with caps in the cap form. Because it does make it a little bit easier for me to see. Um, even though it's white 
your answers come in as white writing on black background, sometimes um, the T's and the F's especially. The other letters I can tell, but sometimes the T's and F's are hard to tell because the only difference between the lowercase T's and F's is the slight little curve of the F at the top. But sitting so far away from my, my screen, my eyes don't work as good as they used to. So they're not as good as they once were. Roseanne says, okay. So the correct answer was B, her cell phone and her gun. And the first person who rang in with that was Miss Jen. Whoop, whoop. So now we have Jen with three and Roseanne with six. All right, question number 10 is multiple choice. Who did Walt want to talk to Henry about? Was it A, Dina, B, Katie, or C, Malachi? And everyone it did ring in with the correct answer, which was A, Dina. And the first person who rang in with that correct answer was Miss Roseanne, taking her to seven points on the board. Awesome. All right. Number 11 is a true or false question. Henry said when it came to Dina... He was drawing a blank, meaning he didn't know who she was. Henry said when it came to Dina, he was drawing a blank. All right. Most of the answers were true with one false, and the correct answer is true. He told Walt he was drawing a blank. In other words, he did not want to talk about her. And the first person who rang in with that correct answer was Miss Roseanne. All right. Miss Roseanne is two points away from having 10. So she has eight and Miss Jen has three. And Miss Charlie, I have faith that this next one is your question. It is also a true or false. All right. When Walt asked Henry to reach out to Dina, Henry said that bridge needs to be repaired first. True or false? When Walt asked Henry to reach out to Dina, Henry said that bridge needs to be repaired first. All right, everyone has rang in with false. That is the correct answer. What he actually said was that bridge was fully incinerated <laughs> like poof, over with and the person who rang in with the correct answer first was miss roseanne all right question number 13 is multiple choice what was the name of the bar Henry gave Walt? Was it Ronald's Beer Pub, Ronald's Beer Hole, or C, Ronald's Rec Room? This is the bar that he saw Dina at with Malachi's guy.
and everyone rang in with C for Ronald's Rec Room. That is the correct answer. And the person who rang in first, now giving them 10 points on the board, was Miss Roseanne. Woo woo! All right, y'all, Miss Roseanne's on the runaway train. She says she's in the engine and y'all are in the caboose. All right. Question number 14 is multiple choice. What did Sean do when the car sped by him? Jen says, woohoo. <laughs> All right. Did he A, memorize the license plate? B, throw a rock at the car? Or C, call the driver a name? Anna says, laugh out loud, laugh out loud. Well, hello, Michael Reeves. <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's the first time I've seen him on here actually answering. Sweet. And Roseanne says, yay, Jen. Yes. So the correct answer was A, he memorized the license plate. And yes, Jen rang in with the correct answer first, taking her to four points on the board. And Roseanne says, hi, Michael. <laughs> Jen says he's testing it out. That is awesome, Mike. I love it. Anna says, welcome, Michael. All right. So, number 15 is a true or false question. Sean got a signal on the cell phone. True or false? Sean got a signal on the cell phone. and everyone has rung in with the correct answer. It is true. He not only got a signal, but he was able to call Walt. And the first person who rang in with that correct answer was Miss Roseanne. Good job, Miss Roseanne. All right, next question is a multiple choice. Who did Sean tell Walt was driving the speeding car? Was it A, Branch, or B, it was Vic, or C, Ed Gorski? Everyone has rung in with the correct answer. It is C, Ed Gorski, and Miss Charlie. You won that point, my friend. Yay! Whoop, whoop! Miss Charlie is on the train. Yay, Charlie, Roseanne said. Sweet, sweet. Jen says, whoop, whoop. Charlize says, whoop. <laughs> I'm so happy. You're out of the train station, my friend. Anna says, grat, Charlie. Now, Anna, now Charlie is, is number one, right? <laughs> All right. Everyone is out of the train station and on the train. Whoop, whoop. Okay, next question is multiple choice. Who 
called out to Walt. Anna says, yep, laugh out loud. <laughs> Was it A, Sean, B, Vic, or C, Ed? <laughs> oh, Jen, you're so sweet. Jen says, come on, Charlie, come sit by me. All right, and everyone rang in with the correct answer. It was C, Ed. He called out Sheriff. And the person who rang in first with that answer, now taking them to five points on the board, was Miss Jen. Roseanne says, I was ready to type Ed. <laughs> Anna says, my train is under repairs. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Anna, you're, you're on the train with us. You're just, you're just a passenger riding with us today. So no one gets left behind. No one. All right. Roseanne says, yay, Jen. And Jen says, laugh out loud. Grandma Anna. <laughs> Jen says, free ride. That's right. Anna says, chugga chugga whoop, Jen. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Next question is also a multiple choice question. This is question 19. What did Ed tell Walt that cowboys think every problem can be solved with? I'll read the question one more time. What did Ed tell Walt that cowboys think every problem can be solved with? Is it A, a gunfight, B, polite conversation, or C, tip in the hat? And everyone rang in with the correct answer. And it is A with a gunfight. And the first person who rang in with that was Miss Roseanne. All right. Sorry, I'm trying to get my crochet ready so I could actually crochet. Because I'm still working on my daughter-in-law's hoodie. She's the only one whose hoodie I didn't get done. All right, Miss Roseanne, you now have 12 points. We have Jen with five and Miss Charlie with one. Whoop, whoop. All right, next question is a multiple choice. What did Ed tell Walt he was to Vic? What did Ed tell Walt he was to Vic? A, her guardian angel, B, her lover, or C, her, wor her worst nightmare? Oh, wow, y'all rang in fast. All right, most of the answers that came in were A, her guardian angel, with one, her worst nightmare. And Ed did tell Walt that he was a guardian angel to Vic. So the correct answer is A. And the first person, Jen says, Mike said A, oops. And the first person who rang in with that correct answer was Miss Roseanne. Good job. All right. Next question is multiple choice. What happened to Sean? A, he was hit by a car. B, he passed out. Or C, he was kidnapped. Uh, 
Everyone rang in with the correct answer. And it is C. He was kidnapped. And the first person who rang in with the correct answer was Miss Jen. Charlie, you were so close, hon. Literally, Jen's popped up and yours was like, boom, right there. And Roseanne says, Jen! <sighs> Yay! All right. Next question is multiple choice. What kind of sandwich was offered to Vic? Was it A, a ham sandwich, B, a fried bologna sandwich, or C, a tuna fish sandwich? Jen says, laugh out loud. <laughs> and the crowd went wild. And yes, everyone rang in with the correct answer, and it was B, a fried bologna sandwich. And Miss Jen is on a roll. She is moving up in her boxcars. She now has seven points. Miss Roseanne has 13. Charlie has one. And going into question 22, it is a true or false question. So get your T's and your F's ready. Roseanne says, laugh that loud. <laughs> Walt said Chance was upset with him for killing his brother. True or false? <laughs> Jen says, rolling down the track. <laughs> Walt said that Chance was upset with him for killing his brother. True or false? And everyone rang in with true that is the correct answer. And the one who rang in first was Miss Roseanne. So congratulations. All right. Question number 23 is also a true or false question. Jen says, putting on the brakes now. <laughs> Ed could not believe Vic was with Sean since he isn't a cop and didn't try to throw a punch when he was abducted. True or false? Everyone rang in with true. That is correct. Miss Roseanne, you are now on the board with 15 points. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> so we have Roseanne with 15, Jen with 7, and Charlie with 1. Awesome, awesome. All right. Roseanne says, choo-choo. Charlie says, whoop. <laughs> I love you guys so much. All right. Next question is multiple choice. Who does Chance think is always listening in? Is it A, the NSA, B, CSI, or C, CIA? The most, the answer that came through the most was A, the NSA, and we had an answer for C, CIA, and the correct answer is A, NSA, and Miss Roseanne took that point, moving her to 16 on the board. All right, our next question is also multiple choice. What was put on Sean and Vic's head? That is true, Jen. It is all government. And I know a lot of times he did say government, but he did specifically say NSA a couple times. 
Jen says, laugh out loud. <laughs> All right, 25, multiple choice. What was put on Sean and Vic's head? Was it A, paper bag, B, motorcycle helmet, or C, blanket? All right. The majority of the answers that came in were B for motorcycle helmet. Roseanne said C at first and then B, um, which C was blanket. And the correct answer is B, motorcycle helmet. And the first person who rang in with that correct answer is Miss Jen taking her to eight. Whoop, whoop. All right. Now we've got some true or false ones coming up. So the next one is true or false. Okay, hang on. Roseanne says, hold up. She has to refresh. And then she also said, yay, Jen. So let me know, Miss Roseanne, when you're back with us. All right, she says she's back. All right, so this next question is true or false. Vic and Ed. Anna says, you go, girl. Jen, I'm trying to figure out what you said. WB, what does WB stand for? But she says WB. Oh, I'm thinking too literal. My bad. She says, welcome back, Roseanne. Roseanne says, I got knocked out. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And then Jen said, welcome back. And Roseanne says, go ahead, I'm back. Roseanne says, thank you. <laughs> I was going too literal. All right. True or false? Vic and Ed were hit in the head with a metal pipe. True or false? Everyone rang in with false. That is correct. It was a baseball bat. And the first person who rang in with the correct answer was Jen. <laughs> Roseanne says, neck and neck, Jen. <laughs> Roseanne says, I'm hitting in. <laughs> so, yes, Jen, you got that point, taking you to nine on the board. Roseanne with 16 and Charlie with one. All right. The next one is also a true or false question. Number 27. Ed kept Walt from warning the police officer. True or false. Jen says nice. True or false, Ed kept Walt from warning the police officer. Everyone rang in with true. True is the correct answer. And Jen took that one as well. So now, Jen, you have 10 points on the board. Sweet job. All right. We're back to, wait a minute. Yep, we're back to multiple choice. Vic told Sean that Chance doesn't plan on letting them go because Chance did not do what? A, let them make any phone calls. B, share where they were headed for the weekend. Or C, 
blindfold them. <laughs> Jen says double digits. <laughs> Yes, you have made it to double digits. All right, most of the answers that rang in were C, blindfold them, and then one answer for A, which was not make a phone call. And yes, he would not let Vic make a phone call. He said he didn't um, even have a phone or a cell phone. But, excuse me, when Vic and Ed were actually talking, she said to him that he did not plan on letting them go, even if he gave the passcode to his cell phone or, or Vic's cell phone, because he didn't blindfold them. So the correct answer was C. And Jen took that point taking her to 11. So Jen has 11 points, Roseanne has 16, and Charlie has one. And Roseanne says right. All right, the next one is a true or false question. Vic thought that the dead body dropped was Walt. Vic thought that the dead body that was dropped was Walt. Did we lose Miss Charlie? We can't lose the birthday girl. All right, I got Roseanne and Jen ringing in with true. And the correct answer is true. She thought it was Walt. Oh. Bless your heart. Charlie says, sorry, my grandson's hungry. Oh. <laughs> and the correct answer is true. And Miss Roseanne, you got that point. It's a great job, Roseanne. And we got to take care of our grandbabies, don't we? Roseanne says, thanks. You are welcome, my friend. You have 17 points on the board. Miss Charlie, Anna says, whoop, chugga, chugga, whoop, right? <laughs> Charlie says he is 16. We still got to take care of them. He's a growing boy. Do you need to stop and get him something? Anna says, my granddaughter is 16. Wow. I'm so happy to be on that grandparent train. <laughs> oh. I was talking to one of my aunts yesterday, and she had all of her grandchildren in one place for one Christmas and it was the first time and um, yeah that is awesome Charlie says I will turn deep fryer on in a minute okay all right so moving on to question number 30 it is also a true or false question. The dead body that Walt found in the freezer was a deputy from the next county that went missing two years ago. 
true or false. The dead body Walt found in the freezer was a deputy from the next county that went missing two years ago. Everyone rang in with false, and that is the correct answer. It was an FBI agent that was taking a census that went missing two years ago. So good job, um, especially on that question. Good way to pay attention to detail. And Miss Roseanne took that point, taking her to 18, Jen 11, Charlie 1. All right, question 31, multiple choice. Walt said Thomas Jefferson said the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of what? A, men, B, tyrants, or C, government officials. Walt said, Thomas Jefferson said, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of what? A, men, B, tyrants, C, government officials. Okay. So, A is what everyone rang in with. And that is not the correct answer. So it is either B or C and the first one to ring in with the correct answer of those two 50 50 chance. We'll get the point. I've got Roseanne coming in with C Jen and Charlie coming in with C. All right, we're just going to see who's got the fastest finger because C is the wrong answer. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so close between Charlie and Roseanne. But Roseanne took it, Charlie. The correct answer is B. So Walt was quoting a quote from Thomas Jefferson, and it was, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of tyrants is the correct answer. And so Roseanne got that. So we're getting history lessons too off of Longmire. All right. Now, that was interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this next question. It is also multiple choice but it is related to the last question. So Walt was quoting Thomas Jefferson, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of tyrants and chance responded tyrants and what? A soldiers, B followers or C patriots. Excuse me. Gonna switch from coffee to tea for a minute. I'm definitely gonna have to go brush my teeth now. <laughs> All right, so we've got everybody coming in mostly with C and one answer for B. C is Patriots and B was followers. The correct answer is C tyrants and patriots and the person who got that point taking them to a total of 20 is miss roseanne whoop, whoop. all right <laughs> and charlie came back with c yes oh no she did have c my bad All right, so we now have one, two, three, four, 
five questions left, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yep, we got five questions left for this episode. Here we go. Multiple choice. Chance told a follower of his to get the keys to what car? Was it A, a Granada, B, a sedan, or C, a Nova? What kind of car did Chance tell a follower to get the keys for? A, Granada, B, sedan, C, Nova. And everyone rang in with A, and the correct answer is A, a Granada. And the person who rang in first was Miss Roseanne, taking her to 21. All right. Next question is true or false? In fact, the last four questions of this episode are all true and false. So you can put your A, B, and C's away, and we're only looking at T and F for the next four questions. All right, next question. Chance only let Vic go, not Sean. True or false? Chance only let Vic go, not Sean. True or false? Everyone rang in with false, and that is the correct answer. He let them both go. And the person who rang in with the correct answer first was Miss Jen. Sweet. All right. We'll answer the last three questions, and then I'll give a score total at the end of a, the episode. All right. Next question. Chance confessed to Walt that he killed Walt's wife. True or false? Chance confessed to Walt that he killed his wife. True or false? Jen says, cool. Roseanne says, yay, Jen. And the correct answer everyone rang in with is indeed false. He did not confess to killing Walt's wife. And the person who rang in with the correct answer first was Miss Roseanne. Woo -woo! All right, two questions left. True or false? Ed told Vic goodbye. True or false? Roseanne says, okay. True or false? Ed told Vic goodbye. And everyone rang in with true. The correct answer is true. And the person who rang in with that first was Miss Roseanne. Hang on a second. Roseanne says, I am wanting to type something to see where you end the last question. Jen says, woohoo. All right, what are you wanting to type? I'm wanting to type something to see. Oh, 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 I got what you're saying. I got what you're saying. I got what you're saying. All right, awesome, awesome. All right, so here we go. Thank you for that, Roseanne. That was very sweet. I know what you're talking about. Yep. I got it. She says, I just, I just let you see where you end at. I appreciate that. Here we go. Very last question. Vic curled up to Sean and cried. True or false? Vic Roseanne says, mark the board. Yes. <laughs> yeah, y'all, you knew that was false. 
Yes, fault is the correct answer. She did not curl up to Sean and cry. She jumped into Walt's truck and <laughs> spun them tires, turned that vehicle around, and she went after Walt. So, yes, the correct answer was indeed false. And the first person who rang in with that is, that's right, Dan. Uh, Charlie says, going to put food in deep fryer now. Okay. And, um, uh, Roseanne says she left him in the dust. Indeed she did. So Charlie, we've got a couple discussion questions we're going to do real quick. So hopefully that will give you some time to come back before we start the next episode. Yes, she did. Roseanne, she left him in the dust. And <laughs> Jen says, laugh out loud. Yes, she did. And, so that leads me into our first discussion question. And it is, I put, let's see. <laughs> I put Vic, then an arrow to Walt and a big question mark. <laughs> what do you think? Does she have feelings for Walt? Because, you know, all along, I've kind of felt like she looked at him like a mentor, you know, her boss, the sheriff. But when that bag dropped, the way she reacted and got over to see if that was Walt, I still was like, okay, this is, you know, her boss. This is, this is who she works with. She has this close working relationship. My gosh, they uncover uh, dead bodies all the time. They're solving cases. They spend a lot of time together. She is like his, I mean, he is like her mentor. Okay, I was reading some of your answers. I'll get there in just a second. And then... When she unzipped that bag, though, and it wasn't him, and sh she looked at Sean, I was like, ruh row, we're in trouble. Because it wasn't, to me, a look of relief that, oh my gosh, it's not Walt my boss, it's not Walt my mentor, it's not Walt my friend. Those tears of emotion, to me, were deep and heavy. Like that feeling of um, deep compassion for somebody, you know, to me, that was, of course, mine would have been a lot more dramatic if that had been my husband in that bag and I was relieved to see it wasn't him because we're actually married and have a good marriage. But with her, like I said, when she looked up at Sean, the relief, it was, like I said, it was just, it was just deep, so much deeper than a friendship or a boss. All right. So let's see what y'all are saying. Um, Jen says, yes. Roseanne says, put Lizzie in the front, in front of him and he'll go for her. But when Lizzie is not there, he feels for Vic. And then Jen says, oh yes, Right. And Roseanne says, yes, you're so right. Yeah, it was in that moment that I now have gone from seeing her, seeing him as a strong role model to the girl has feelings for Walt. <laughs> Which, you know, I kind of was on that boat anyway. I mean, like I was often on that boat. But not so much as in her having like love feelings you know, intimate feelings for him, even though when she withheld and hid the gift from Lizzie, I still took that not, I mean, we talked about this, you know, about whether or not she had feelings for him back then, but I honestly felt like then the reason she held the gift wasn't so much that she had intimate feelings for him. It was the fact that 
one, I do think she was jealous, but not in a girlfriend kind of jealous way, more as in a distraction, you know, taking his mind off of the job. Um, Because I will say this, Vic is good at the job. She's very, very good, good at the job. She's very dedicated to the job. And Vic, is, I mean, and Walt is kind of like her, her partner in solving and maintaining order. And I think he grounds her, you know, with everything that she went through with Ed and then Sean, you know, traveling all the time. I think Walt is just like this solid male positive role model for her and he grounds her and she was jealous of the attention being diverted somewhere else that's how I looked at it until that moment when she unzipped that bag saw that that officer and then she looked up at Sean and then when Ed got up and left and said goodbye to her and walked away and she looked at Sean again, and then she jumped in Walt's car and turned around to go back. I mean, to me, that just said it all. She has true feelings for, for Walt. Okay, that's my opinion. Now let me see what you're saying. Roseanne says, yes. Jen says, poor Sean. Roseanne says, Sean is a fill-in-the-moment kind of guy. For Vic. And then Roseanne says, hmm, yes. Roseanne says, done deal. Yes. And Jen, I completely agree with you. Poor Sean. Because Sean's a great guy. Like, he's a good man. He's working hard to provide for them. He truly loves her. And um, I have to agree with Ed. As much as I do not like Ed at all. I saw a different side of Ed in this episode. Yes, maybe Ed does blame Vic for what happened and him losing his job. Is he really trying to protect her? I don't know. But I do feel so bad for Sean because I mean, he loves her. I mean, he's committed to their marriage. And, but I do agree with Ed. Vic likes the bad boys, you know? She likes the ones that kind of live on the edge. She's not a safe kind of gal. Like, look how bullheaded she is at times. And she'll just go in guns blazing, running that mouth of hers, which, oh my gosh, I would be so afraid to do. Like, I'd be so afraid of getting shot or killed or, you know, punched or whatever, you know, it just, she's a life on the edge kind of girl and she lives by the seat of her pants. And Sean is so cautious and so, you know, grounded that they're complete polar opposites. And I know they say opposites attract, but I don't know. Let's see what y'all are saying. Roseanne says, yes, so true. Charlie says, Ed cares for her. She likes the bad boys. Yes. Um, I think after what happened with Ed, Sean came into her life and he was that. He, he was safe. You know, he was... Um, had a, has a good head on his shoulders and I don't know as though she was maybe drawn to that as much as she needed that that calmness you know after finding out that Ed was a married man and here she'd been you know fooling around with a married man because from what I understood from the storyline so far is that when she was dating or when she was with Ed she did not realize that he was married, even though they were meeting in room 32. It was just kind of like their safe place, you know, because they were both cops. That's how I perceived her seeing it. <coughs> Excuse me. So when Sean came along, he brought this 
this level of safe, you know, comfortable. But I feel so bad for him. And I'm not on the bandwagon of Vic and Walt yet. Like, <coughs> I'm still on that, that Walt and Lizzie. But so much time has passed that Lizzie is not the type of girl to wait around either. So I think Lizzie is, is, is out of the picture. That's my opinion. You know, I haven't seen the head, so I don't, I don't know. So, um, and Charlie, I do agree with you. I do think Ed cares for her. I, I do genuinely think he does. I don't think he's trying to stalk her. I, which is going to lead us into our next discussion question, but I think at first he he might have been a little bit angry with her because she ended things with him when she found out he was married. And then, you know, her partner ended up killing or Ed's partner ended up killing himself. And it was a lot to do with Vic bringing things to light, which caused Ed to lose his job. So at first, yes, there was a lot of turmoil there that I think Ed was initially upset about but deep down Charlie I do agree with you I think Ed does care for her and I think that came out a lot more in this episode until this episode I just not care for Ed at all he just you know made me sick to my stomach but in this episode we saw a softer more gentle caring side of Ed and I think that's what Walt picked up on too is that Ed genuinely does care for Vic and he was trying to protect her. But what is he protecting her from? So that leads into my next discussion question, but let me read your stuff first. Anna says Vic likes alpha males. Oh, I do. I do agree with that 100%. I do agree with that, Anna, 100%. She does like alpha males. That's definite. Um, and with saying that, I think that Vic also likes being an alpha female as well. So she's definitely a take charge kind of person. She is not going to sit back. And I will say this. She has cried more in this episode than I have seen her throughout the whole three seasons. And I love the fact that in her character, we also got to see more of a not so guarded, not so stiff kind of character. Like, you, you can just tell she has walls up and you could kind of see some of those walls coming down. And I was glad to see a little bit of that, that kind of woman, female nature in her. You know, she's so tough, but I think it's because she's so guarded and she's got these walls up. And it's like you can see her starting to break down a little bit and not be as guarded. Like she's, she's learning how to express her feelings more and she's in touch with her feelings more. I'm just not so sure I'm ready for her and Walt to be something more than what they already are. Like right now, I like them being, you know, co-workers. <laughs> Jen says, I'm glad that saga is over with Ed. But I'm not sure it totally is over. Time will tell, I guess. Well, that was my next question. That's what I was leading up to. He told her goodbye. But is it really goodbye? Like, is he really going to walk away from her? Did he see 
what Sean is seeing. We know Sean sees that she has feelings for Walt more than just being her boss. And we saw that even, I think, kind of through Ed. Like, I think Ed is picking up on that too. But is he gone for good? Is he going to just walk away? After everything we've been through with him, you know, he went through a lot of trouble to coming back into her life, you know, where we thought he was just trying to torment her. Maybe he wasn't trying to torment her. Maybe he was trying to remind her of what they once had before she married Sean. Because in his mind, he can't see her settling with a guy like Sean. So, is it the last? Is, is, is the Ed saga over? I don't know. Anna says, I agree. Roseanne says, I agree too. Jen says, me too. I'm assuming that y'all are talking about the Walt and Vic scenario like I think that's what y'all are talking about there Jen says I thought someone else was stalking her um and that is a possibility I know that all the creepy weird things ended up being kind of um revealed that it was Sean, you know, like leaving the postcard or was it, or was it because Jen, you might be on something because when Walt brought up the postcard and the 32 on the back, Ed never said anything about the postcard and the number 32 on the back of it. He was more shocked that Walt even knew that the room 32 existed. And he was like, she told you about that? Like he didn't even acknowledge about the postcard or react to the postcard. He went straight to being shocked that Walt even knew about the room. Charlie says, I agree too about Walt and Vic. Yeah, I just... I mean, we'll see three seasons from now how I feel about Walt and Vic being a couple. But right now, yeah, no, I, I don't I don't want I don't want that. I don't think. But I do want Walt to find somebody like he's got to find somebody by the end of season six. Come on. <laughs> he needs a woman, but I just don't want it to be Vic right now. But yeah, that's a good, good point, Jen. Was it actually Ed or was it someone else? And Vic's mind led us to thinking it was Ed. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, this is just so good. All right. So those are my two discussion questions I had. Was the Vic and Walt and... Are we done seeing Ed? Oh, Charlie. <laughs> she says, oh, I can't answer. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And y'all, the sad part is, is we are on, if we stay on schedule, we will not finish this until the end of April. Oh, my God. Oh my gosh, I have never been so drawn into a series as I am right now. Uh, okay. <sighs> All right. So I have a question real quick before we move on. On, on everyone who's on here, um, is there anyone who has, Jen says, 
I wish we could zoom this. I'm not saying everything I want to. Um, yeah. Let me. What I need to do is um, talk to some of my friends that are doing that stream yard. Because then you guys can come up. It's a lot like Zoom. And we could do it right here on YouTube. I help make a video for someone. So I'll see if maybe they will help me. Because, and I know they use the StreamYard. I'll see if they will help um, me be able to get that set up. Because then y'all can come up. So. Jen says, right? Okay. Grandma Anna says, I could zoom on my tablet. My PC doesn't have a camera. Okay. All right. I will email that person and ask them if they will tell me how to. And I might just Google StreamYard and I'm sure it'll tell me how to do it. And with my husband being the computer savvy one, he figures out everything else for me. So I will look into that. Maybe that's something that we'll be able to do starting January 8th. That would be absolutely amazing. All right. Okay. Jen says, maybe it's better if I don't say more. <laughs> I might remember something from before. Oh. <laughs> oh, well. I mean, we're eventually going to find out, right? So my quick question before we go on to episode eight. Call the midwife. How many of you have actually already seen that? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I miss Charlize. It is killing me that I know. Oh. <laughs> and so then Jen is saying, right, Charlie? Jen says, I have not. Roseanne says, not me. Oh, Anna. <laughs> Charlie says, I have not. Okay. All right. Anna, how long has it been since you saw it? And for the rest of you, please don't watch it. <laughs> Let's do it together. Hopefully it's been a while. Getting food out now. Okay, Charlie. Hello, Viola. She says, hi, I've been just hanging out and crocheting. I have not seen it. Oh, that is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, Viola, where are you at on your Longmire blanket? Grandma Anna says, I have... No problem watching it again. It's It's been a while. Okay, great. And Roseanne says, hi, Viola. Okay. Try not to watch it until we watch it. <laughs> ah, I'm so excited. And Jen says, hi, Viola. Oh, my goodness. I will say this, though. I feel like we went through season three really fast. I mean, I know we don't finish it up until the next time we come together, which is not this Friday, but the next Friday, uh, January 8th. But I don't know. I feel like we still went through it fast. So, oh. Viola says, did not do the last edition. Too busy with Christmas stuff. Oh, yes. I understand that. I was just curious. And by the way, I appreciate y'all so, so much sending me your pictures. Excuse me. I was showing my husband and, I mean, y'all's blankets are just beautiful. And, it, and even he was just like so amazed how 
just the different color change up makes the blankets look so different. But, um, and some of you have um, like one particular color in yours that really just makes yours pop, you know? And so, oh my gosh, I cannot wait for that day when I get to just, you know, share all of your blankets. Um, that is, I, I just can't wait for you guys to see what I'm getting to see. And so, yes. So going forward, the blessing for you guys is getting to pick the color changes up, change ups. For me, it's being able, I, I my reward comes from when you guys share and I get to see your progress. And so anyway, Viola says, hi, Roseanne and Jen. Roseanne says, it was fast, right? Season three, to me, just really flew by for us. Um, but it was the same amount of episodes as we had before. And I do think season one had more. Because I think we had 13 episodes in season one. But, but the rest of them have been like 10. But it did seem to go by fast. Jen says, I've gotten some attaboys on the blanket. That is awesome. That is awesome, Jen. Roseanne says that that Roseanne says, it is good to hear, Jen. Yes, yes, Jen. <coughs> and Anna says, I need to send you a current picture. I would love that. I know you told me that. I would love to see your daughters, too. Wait, because didn't you say, Anna, she's doing one as well? I know she's been complimenting yours, but I thought you told me. I think it was you that told me that she was doing it. Viola says, that's great, Jen. Yes. Now, Roseanne, if I'm remembering correctly, because my memory is not the greatest, but you actually have a um, club that you do on Mondays that you Zoom, right? And you've been able to share yours. Okay, you said no, she loves the one you're making. There's someone, I feel so bad now. A mother and daughter that are making, that, that is making the blanket together. And Roseanne says yes, yes. I think that's awesome. All right, episode eight is called Harvest. So our score at the end of episode one, oh, that's right, I forgot. We were splitting the episodes to choose colors instead of the whole. So let's do this. I have six colors for this next section that I need. So we ended with Jen at 13 points, Roseanne had 22, and Charlie had one. So since I need six colors for the next section, for this section, I will need three colors. Let's see, what was that? Roseanne says, I show and do my blanket while on Zoom with them. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Charlie says she is back with us. Welcome back, my friend. And Roseanne says, I've got to go upstairs for the chart. Every, everybody pick two. And Charlie says, more, more food in now. And Roseanne says, oh, P 
pick only pick one then. Okay. Yes. All right. So So if that's the case, then since Jen and Charlie are the only other two people with points on the board, we're going to let Roseanne pick the first color. And then Jen, since you have the most points after that, you can pick the second color. And then Charlie picks the third color. Jen says, pick after all done. Oh, you okay. So you're saying you want it. Okay. I got what you're saying. We can do that. Because the way I've got this, I still have it separated. So, all right. That's cool. Well, let's make sure we got Roseanne back. Is Roseanne... And Roseanne said, okay, are you, have you gotten your chart, Roseanne? I mean, we're not going to do the colors until the end, but. And she said, yes. Okay. All right, everybody, give me thumbs up when you're ready for the first question in season eight. I got Roseanne. I've got Jen. Charlie might have had to go put more food in. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. She says she's on laptop. Don't know how. Okay. All right. Here we go. Question number one. And this, this episode was called Harvest. And the first question is a true or false question. Walt got shot. True or false? Okay, real quick, <clears throat> I think um, Roseanne, Jen, and Charlie, all of y'all want to just make sure that your lines and stuff are all the way over. The only reason I'm asking that is because I read the question, and it was a probably good four or five seconds. Jen saying Charlie might need to refresh. I think you guys do too, Jen, because like I said, it was a good three or four seconds after I finished the question before any of y'all's answers started coming through as well. Roseanne says, got it. But the answer to that, the correct answer to that is true. And the first person who rang in with that correct answer was Miss Roseanne. So, just like the last episode, Miss Roseanne, you got the first point on the board. Sweet! Woo woo! <laughs> All right, question number two. Everybody ready? Is multiple choice. 
Jen says, I've been lagging all day. Oh. Well, I'm glad we're keeping connection, though. And says, ready. Okay. Here we go. Multiple choice. The doctor told Walt to go by what and take some time off work? Was it A, alcohol, B, rodeo tickets, or C, lottery tickets? Oh, and uh, while you're answering that, on the first question, Walt did get shot. He got grazed in the arm. But nonetheless, he still got shot. All right, everybody rang in with C. C is the correct answer. It was lottery tickets. And the first person who rang in with that was Miss Roseanne. All right. Question number three is true or false? Walt hugged Vic. True or false? All right. Everybody rang in with true. That is the correct answer. And Miss Roseanne got it first. All right. Woo woo. Miss Roseanne's train has left the station. All right, number four is multiple choice. Sean asked Vic to do what? A, stay home from work. B, go on the trip that they had already planned to go on. Or C, turn in her two weeks notice. Jen says, Vic hugged him first. I'm just thinking about that because it seems like, I mean, I remember them standing there. But I thought he was the one. I'm trying to envision that scene. I thought he was the one who actually, and it might have been she hugged him, but he's the one who pulled her in for a tighter hug. Because I remember the doctor walked away. She was sitting in the chair across the room, and he got off of the bed. Um... And, and was putting his shirt on. I see the, the comments going. All right, she says, then he hugged her back and she cried. Roseanne says he held onto her wrist, then pulled her in for the hug. Charlie says, Vic hug first. Okay. Jen says, oh, I must have missed that part. Well, no, because according to Charlie, she did hug him first. I just remember that he, he hugged her back hard. Roseanne says, hmm, I missed it too. Yeah, they were in the room. And dang, I'll have to go back and watch it now. But yes, the answer is uh, of C, to turn in her two weeks notice. And the first person who got that one with their first point on the board for this um, episode is Miss Jen. So, yep. We'll have to go back and watch that, that section. 
So it's right at the very beginning, obviously. All right, the next question, question number five, is multiple choice. Who does Vic think read a private document on her laptop? Was it A, Ruby, B, Sean, or C, Ed? Rosen says, yay, Jen. All right, everyone rang in with B. That is the correct answer. She blamed Sean for reading that because her laptop was at home and she knew that somebody had opened it and read the document and she accused Sean. And so the first person who rang in with that was Miss Jen. So Jen has two points on the board and Miss Roseanne has three. All right, question number six, true or false? Branch confessed to Vic that he was the one who read the document on her computer. <laughs> Roseanne says you're out of the station now, Jen. Yes. Jen is no longer at the station. She is on the train. Jen says, woo, woo. And everyone rang in with true. And the correct answer is true. And the first person who rang in with that is Jen. We have a tie. Woo, woo. All right. So we have Jen and Roseanne with three points on the board. Question number seven is true or false. Branch went to the Lindler farm with Vic. Branch went to the Lindler farm with Vic. All right. Most of you rang in with false. We have one true, and the correct answer is false. And Miss Jen took that, and with that point, she took the lead. Whoop, whoop! We got a new engineer. All right. Roseanne says, oops. <laughs> All right, next question is multiple choice. George Lindler was shot in the back of what? A, his back, B, his head, or C, his leg? All right. Hey, Miss Deborah. How are you? Let me get you on the board. Welcome, welcome. And Miss Roseanne says, hi, Debbie. And the correct answer is A. He was shot in the back and Miss Roseanne Got that point. Tying up the score again. So we have Jen and Roseanne both on with four points. Going into question number nine. It is true or false. Jen's, uh, Deborah says, just sneaking in. Jen says, hi, Deborah. V says, hi, Debbie. And Grandma Anna says, hi, Debbie. We are so glad you're here. And she says, hello to all. All right, question number nine, true or false? Katie asked Branch to help her 
find a good private investigator. True or false? I'm going to read that again. It's kind of a trick question. Katie asked Branch to help her find a good private investigator. All right. The answers are divided. Half of you said true and half of you said false. And if you said false, then you got the correct answer. She asked him to help her pay for one. So the person who rang in with the correct answer first and breaking the tie is Jen. Whoop, whoop. Roseanne says, well, it's partially right. And Charlie says, it is false. Roseanne said she did ask for a PI2. Yay, Jen. I think she asked, Anna says, whoop, Jen. I think she asked him to pay. Well, I think he, I think he thought. Let me think. Let me try to remember this. Like I said, it's been a week since I watched it. I know he wasn't shocked about her asking him to pay for it. But he came back and said why she didn't ask him for his help. So I'm not sure that she was asking him to help her find a P.I., I think she was asking him for the money and then he was like, well, why don't you ask me for my help? Roseanne says the money was for the PI. Roseanne says he said that's why you're asking for money when he can do it. Jen says she didn't ask him to help. She asked for money. Roseanne says, yes, I got it now. Okay. All right, so let's go back up and see who got it first. Wait, I already gave the point, right? I can count this up. Nine, yes, I gave the point to Jen. Okay, because we got Jen at five and Roseanne at nine. And I mean at four, which gives us nine points. And we're moving on to question 10. So I'm making sure I got, I gave the person the point. And Anna says, whoop, Jen. And Roseanne says, oh, let's see. Wait a minute. I back my things up. Let's see. Deborah says, yes. Okay. All right. We're all on the same page now. Question number 10 is also true or false. George Lindler stole the farm from Nick Holman. True or false? All right. Most of you rang in with false and one rang in with true. And the correct answer is false. George farmed on the land, but Nick owned the land. So he didn't steal it. So George farmed there and Nick owned it. So it is false. It was He did not steal the farm from Nick Coleman. So the first person who rang in with the correct answer of false was Miss Roseanne tying the score back up. Five to five between her and Jen. Woo -woo! All right. Number 11 is multiple choice. What did Dawn, this is George Lindler's wife, do when Walt told her that George had been shot? 
did she A, break down and cry, B, go and get her guns, or C, laugh at Walt? All right, I'm just making sure everybody has a chance to answer. And now the answer's coming in. Everyone said B for go get her guns. And that is the correct answer. And breaking the tie, giving them a total of six points on the board. That point went to Miss Jen. Woo woo! I said engineer but earlier, but conductor. <laughs> a conductor drives a train. So Jen is currently our conductor on our whoop whoop train. <laughs> Charlie says, yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question is true or false? Dawn blamed Nick for George's death. Don blame Nick for George's death. Jen says, whoop, whoop. Charlie, you are so close to coming in first. So close, my friend. No offense to everyone, but since it's Charlie's birthday, I just wanted her to win today. <laughs> All right. The correct answer is true. And let's see who rang in with it first. And it was Miss Jen taking you to seven points. Congratulations. All right. Next question is a multiple choice. Nick wanted the Lindler's farm after his dad died. So he found a loophole in the contract and started charging them for what? Charlie says, me too. Did he find a loophole and start charging them for A, the right away to their farm, B, the soil to the farm, or C, water. And everybody rang in with C. C is the correct answer for water. And the person who rang in first with that answer is Miss Roseanne. Woo -woo! So now we have Jen at seven and we have Roseanne at six. All right. I need the rest of you on the train. Grandma Anna's riding it. So I need the rest of you all aboard. Choo choo. Jen, I know Mike thinks I'm just like a total loony bird. <laughs> All right. Question 14 is multiple choice. Losing becomes a way of life for who? Losing becomes a way of life for who? Is it A, farmers, B, people, or C, country folk. All right. Roseanne says, whoop, whoop. Jen says, here we go. Here we go. 
Yeah, I know, right? Between you and Roseanne. And then Grandma Anna says, I'm in the passenger section. Laugh out loud. Yes. And Roseanne said, oh, those are answers. Okay. All right. <laughs> Grandma Anna says, laugh out loud. All right, so I have an answer from Roseanne and Jen. Not sure. I know Miss Charlie's trying to cook. So we might lose her some. <laughs> Jen says, I'll visit you, Grandma Anna. Roseanne says, laugh out loud, Grandma Anna. <laughs> right. Sorry, got a message from my youngest son. That might who might have been who was calling my husband a minute ago. So he's asking if I'm home. So I'm telling him yes. All right. So the correct answer, you guys came in with two different answers. All right. So Roseanne said A, farmers. And Jen said C, country folk. One of you has the correct answer. So either Jen will take the point and move up to eight points or Roseanne will take the point and tie the score. Just for fun, those of you that are not Roseanne or Jen, who do you think is right? Which one do you think gave the correct answer? <laughs> Y'all are not wanting to answer. Okay. I hope I'm not lagging. Let me make sure I'm not lagging. <laughs> right, Viola? Way to be Switzerland. <laughs> She says, one of them for sure. Well, this is laugh out loud, right? I laughed so hard I was choking. Roseanne says, laugh out loud, V. Jen says, ha, ha, ha. The tie is scored because Roseanne got that. It was farmers. Farmers. Losing becomes a way of life for farmers. Sorry. I had to make it a little bit more fun. All right. Next question is multiple choice. Who did Nick accuse of killing George? Was it A, George, B, a convict, or C, Dawn? <laughs> Roseanne says dramatic, <laughs> right? <laughs> I have been accused of that from time to time of being dramatic. All right, so everyone rang in with C, and C is the correct answer, and it is Dawn, and the person who took that point, taking the lead, is Miss Jen. She came in first. All right, next question is multiple choice. What did the waitress want from Branch? Did she A, want a photo? B, a dance, or C, a drink? And Roseanne says, yay, Jen. All right, everyone rang in with the same answer of A. And yes, she said she wanted a photo of a real cowboy. And the person who rang in with that answer first, taking them to nine points, was Miss Jen. Woo -woo! So we have Jen at nine, Roseanne at seven. It is anyone's game. All right. Next question. Is true or false? The waitress had info for branch.
Roseanne says the Jen train. Yes, Jen is our current conductor. And everyone rang in with the same answer of false. And that is the correct answer. She did not have any information for him, as she implied. And the person who rang in with that answer first, taking them to 10 points on the board, is Miss Jen. All right. Next question. It is a true or false. George Lindler's spine was severed by a 38 caliber bullet. Roseanne saying it's your turn, Jen, to take the lead. Grandma Anna says, Jen smoking. <laughs> All right. So two of you rang in with true and one with false. And so obviously somebody's right and someone's not. Miss Jen says, chugga chugga. Miss um, Roseanne, you were the only one who rang in with false. And that is the correct answer. Because to make it a true statement, it would be George Lindler's spine was not severed by a 38 caliber bullet. He was indeed shot with the 38 caliber bullet, but it did not shatter the spine. So that was kind of a trick question. So kudos to you, Miss Roseanne, because that was really paying attention to detail. And so Jen says, yay, Roseanne. And Roseanne says, thanks. So now we have Roseanne with eight and Jen with 10. All right. Next question is also a true or false question. Vic was upset with Walt's response to Sean wanting her to quit her job. Vic was upset with Walt's response to Sean wanting her to quit her job. True or false? Rose, uh, Jen says, yay, Roseanne. And Roseanne says, thanks, Jen. And Roseanne says, yep. And everyone rang in with true. The correct answer is true. She did not like, she, I just don't think she got the response from him that she was wanting. Um, and so the first person who rang in with that was Miss Jen. So Jen, you now have 11 points on the board. All right, our next question is multiple choice. What did the biker, excuse me, what did the biker tell Branch he smelled when Branch asked him if he recognized Darius? Did he tell him he smelled A, a rat, B, money, or C, bacon? Roseanne says, go Jen. What did the biker tell Branch he smelled when he showed him the picture and asked about Darius? A, rat, B, money, or C, bacon? Everyone rang in with C, and C is the correct answer, bacon. In other words, he was calling him a cop. He was calling him out. And the person who rang in first with that, giving them 14 points on the board, was Miss Roseanne. Woo -hoo! All right. Next question is multiple choice. Who was in the picture with Branch in the photo 
that the waitress took? Was it A, Katie, B, Ridges, or C, Henry? Mm, interesting. Oh, never mind. I was wrong. <laughs> yes, you all got the correct answer. It was B, David Ridges. And the person who got that point first was Miss Jen. I don't know why, for some reason, because I was paying attention to my crochet, when y'all were putting B, I was thinking that I had David Ridges a C. And so that's why I said that. I, I got. Oh, Mike lost track of score, Jen. So Jen, I have you. Okay. So just to sum this up, we just finished question number 21. So Jen, I have you with 12 and I have Roseanne with nine. Okay. Charlie says hamster wheel. <laughs> right? <laughs> so Jen, you have 12 and Roseanne has 9. And that equals 21. So we are now moving on to question 22, which is multiple choice. What did Branch scream inside the bar? Did he scream A... Where's the cowboy lover? B, anyone seen an Indian with long hair? Or C, Katie, where are you? Jen says, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so far I've gotten one answer from Roseanne. All right, so most of you rang in with B, which is anyone seen an Indian with long hair? And one answer for Katie, where are you? And the correct answer is B, anyone seen an Indian with long hair? And the first person who rang in with that is Miss Roseanne. So, that now brings the score for Miss Roseanne to 10. Jen with 12. So two points difference for a tie and three to take the lead. All right. Next question. Is true or false? Branch showed Katie the picture that was sent to his phone. True or false? Branch showed Katie the picture that was sent to his phone. Oh, we're lagging. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Okay, and you guys are coming back in. All right. So most of you answered false, and we got one true. The correct answer is false. 
because the picture disappeared. <laughs> and Roseanne's already saying, good one, Jen. Yes, Jen took that point, taking her to 13. All right. So, yes, the picture disappeared. Number 24. Do you think there really do you think there really was a picture? Do you think you really got a picture? Roseanne says no. Well, this is my question. And Charlie says no. Roseanne says his mind's playing tricks on him. Well, this was my thing. And this is what I immediately said when he got the picture. Before anything else happens and he's looking at the picture, Jen says, I don't know. My first thought was, well, how'd the waitress get his phone number? She took a picture with her phone or the phone she had. She didn't ask him for his phone number. So how did she have his number to send the picture? Roseanne says, me too. <laughs> but... If, if Ridges really was in the picture and had the waitress do take the picture and mess with him, then Ridges would have access to finding out Branch's cell phone number. So, who knows, right? Roseanne says, but there is a DOPR with like phone. Jen says, right. Charlie says, that's right. Charlie says, yep. So, airdrop. Okay. Right. So, I don't know. We'll see. I don't want to say anything else because the question's coming up. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll put this conversation on hold. Right, Roseanne. The same phone can trade ICs with a tap. Yes. With a can trade pics with a tap. Yes. Very correct. Very, very correct. <coughs> All right. Next question is true or false. Katie thinks Branch is still hallucinating. And everyone said true. That is the correct answer. And Miss Roseanne, you got that point. Sweet. So now you have 11 and Jen has 13. It's still neck and neck. All right. Our next question is a true or false as well. Katie reminded Branch that they were at the bar to help Henry. True or false? Yes, Roseanne. What they're trying to find out, it is about her mom, but it's getting the details of that 
and then Beck to help Henry and, and get him free. So yes, you are correct. So it is about finding out the details about her mom, but it's also to help Henry. And she specifically says that we're here to help Henry, not branch finding ridges. So you are correct in that. Also for Henry, yes. Um, so let me see. I got... So most of you answered... All right, so most of you answered true. Roseanne, you said true first and then false, but the answer is true. That was the first thing that you rang in with. So that counts and you get the point. So now that takes you to 12 and Jen has 13. Trying to figure out what you said. It says good nun Jen. All right. So the next question is a multiple choice. Branch told Katie that her mother is dead and he is what? A, alive, B, confused, C, angry. Roseanne says, I messed up and thought of her mom first. Well, either way, you got the right answer and you got the point. <laughs> and yes, everyone rang in with A for alive, and that is correct. And Jen, you got that point first. Roseanne says, thanks. You're welcome, but you did the work, my friend. So the credit is all you. And that takes Jen to 14. And Roseanne at 12. Loving it. It's getting dark in here, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Can y'all still see me okay? Roseanne says, yay, Jen. <laughs> you can see the Christmas lights more. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, next question is multiple choice. How did Cassie propose to get money for the farm? She's talking with Walt. This is Don and George Lindler's daughter, Cassie. How did Cassie propose to get money for the farm? So, I'm just going to tell you right off, this is kind of a trick question. So, you need to think about the conversation. Ah! Okay, everyone's saying I'm lagging and buffering. So, let me know when I'm back or when you're back. Uh-oh, we might have lost everyone. All right, Roseanne's back. But Jen says back, but it's coming and going. No. Grandma Anna says she's okay. Charlize says back. Okay. All right, so on this question... I was telling you that it's kind of a trick question. So I need you to focus on the conversation between Cassie and Walt. Okay. Not the knowledge of the entire situation, but just 
the conversation between Cassie and Walt. Otherwise, you could choose the wrong answer. Okay, you ready? How did Cassie propose to get money for the farm? Was it A, by cleaning houses, B, sell more farm equipment, or C, harvest? All right, most of you rang in with C, harvest, and one rang in with sell farm equipment or sell more farm equipment. So before I reveal the correct answer and who got it, I'm going to clarify. So we learn that Don and Cassie were also cleaning houses to make ends meet. That's where they were when George apparently was killed. And they did not sell any of their farm equipment. George had sold a piece of farm equipment back to Nick trying to pay off his debt. And so C, harvest, is the correct answer. And so, with, therefore, with that being the correct answer, Miss Roseanne, you, my friend, took that point. Now, bringing the score for you to 13 and Jen 14. Jen says it was C. Roseanne says, shoot. No, you got it, Miss Roseanne. Now she says, whoop, <laughs> whoop, whoop. All right. So Jen is still our conductor at 14 and Miss Roseanne is almost there with 13. All right. Next question is true or false. All right. True or false. Vic upset Sean when they were in bed when she asked if their marriage was about her pretending to be weaker than what she is. True or false? Oh, I'm lagging again. Okay, but y'all are answering. And everybody rang in with true. And the correct answer is true. And oh, I was so happy for them because in that moment, it just seemed so real and so genuine. And I thought, okay, maybe what I was thinking was going on with Vic and Walt was just a figment of my imagination. And then she had to go and say that. And it was just like, girl, girlfriend, what are you thinking? Of course, that would upset him. But yes, the answer was true. And Miss Roseanne, you got that. Bringing the score to a tie. Whoop, whoop. We got two conductors. Roseanne says yes. And it just seems staged for those two. Right? Charlie says she opened her mouth. And that ended it. Yes. Ugh. Thick. And Anna says, tie. Yes. We have a tie. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Next question. It is also a true or false. Sean said, I think we are both done pretending. True or false? 
Everybody rang in with true. That is the correct answer. And Miss Roseanne, you got the answer in first, taking the lead to 15, Jen with 14. Y'all, I'm going to turn a lamp on to give us just a little bit of light. So hang on just a second. I don't know if that helps or not. Okay. That way you can see me just a little bit better. And you can still see the light. Yay! All right. And I can read <laughs> my book. All right. Next question is multiple choice. After that incident with Vic and Sean, Sean leaves the room and Vic's phone goes off. The question is, who called Vic? Was it A, Walt, B, Katie, or C, Ferg? Roseanne says, this is fun, Jen being so close. I know, right? All right, so most of you rang in with B for Katie and one answer C for Ferg. And the correct answer, I'm going to get my blanket back. And the correct answer was B. It was Katie who called her. And Miss Roseanne, you got that point. Congratulations. Whoop, whoop. All right. The next question is true or false. Bob, remember Bob? Bob's kind of like our town drunk, except he's getting sober, he says. Bob told Walt that George was suicidal. True or false? All right, everyone rang in with true, and the correct answer is true. And Miss Roseanne, you took that point. Whoop, whoop. So now we've got Miss Roseanne with 17 points and Jen with 14. All right, Jen says, I'm having technical difficulties. Okay. Am I still lagging? I will say that I have noticed um, Grandma Anna says Jen needs more call. Jen, you and Charlize still are kind of ringing in a little bit slow. So I don't know if y'all need to refresh. I do notice that she's coming in quicker than y'all. Roseanne's asking if you're on live chat. She said, I did, but it's well technical. And yes. I 
I left my chapstick, so I'm gonna put on some lip gloss. Sorry, I can't stand dry lips. All right, so Jen and Shirley are saying yes, they're on live chat. Jen says it's okay, just go ahead. Yeah, but it's no fun if it's not working right. Charlie says frozen. Oh, no. Which honestly, I'll be honest, this was part of my concern about the student on Sunday because Sunday tends to be a really, really busy day for YouTube. Plus, I've heard YouTube has been having a lot of issues, so I don't know if it's actually us or a combination of things. But I do know Sundays are a busy day. Roseanne says we'll all pick a color in the end. Okay. All right. So let's see what question we're on here. We have 15, 16, 17. So we should be on question 32. Yes. All right. So the next question then, we're going to go ahead, is true or false? Walt showed great compassion toward Bob when he mentioned that suicide did not sound bad. Viola says everything is fine here, although my phone was dying. Yeah, that could be a problem. Go run and get a charger, Viola. In technology, right, Viola? Jen says. All right, so Kelly, oh my gosh, welcome, my friend. Yay, Kelly is here. <laughs> Jen says, Hi, Kelly. Roseanne says, Kelly. Charlie says, Hi, Kelly. Oh my gosh, we were missing you. Anna says, hello, partner. I'm just a passenger on the woot woot train tonight. <laughs> Kelly says, didn't realize everyone was on. Oh, I am sorry. Yeah, the reminder went out instead of on Wednesday. It went out on Friday. So that was kind of a, a, a weird night. I tried to do it two days before instead of four. Kelly says, woo, woo, Grandma Anna. Viola says, hi, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Roseanne says, watch the replay. It is fun. Yes, yes. Well, we talked about you, Kelly, in the beginning because we were mentioning the lights and we talked about the tree. I can't point. And then if you look, the alarm clock, of course, where I'm looking, there we go. Can you see it lit up, that little bit of light in there? And then there's the moon sign. Yay. My love from Kelly. So, all right. Question. Mike is like you women. You get so distracted and talk about anything. <laughs> all right. The next question. Let's see. I had asked y'all was, and you've already answered, I got to back up to your answers. The question was, Walt showed great compassion toward Bob when he mentioned suicide didn't sound bad. And let's see, everyone answered true with one false. The correct answer was true. Um, and he did. He, he really did show Bob compassion and told him how valuable he was. And it was a very touching moment. I just 
melted on that scene. I mean, Walt truly is the best candidate for sheriff. No offense to Branch, but he truly is. He just embodies the job naturally. So, um, anyway, so yes, the correct answer is true. Wait, yep. And let's see, the first person to ring in with that was Miss Jen. Yay. And so now, Jen has 15 points and Roseanne is at 17. All right, next question is multiple choice. Who went and picked Katie up from Denver. This is after Branch and Katie kind of had their moment over the whole David Ridges picture and all of that. Who went and picked Katie up from Denver? Was it A, Vic, B, Ferg, or C, Ruby? All right, everyone is ringing in with A for Vic and Kelly C for Ruby. Yes, the correct answer is A. And for those of you who don't know, Kelly doesn't watch the show. She just plays with us and has fun. Laugh out loud, she says. So yes, the correct answer is A for Vic and the person who rang in first on my end and I apologize, my sorry, I'm crocheting in. My hook got stuck. The first person who rang in was Miss Roseanne. Woo -woo! Taking you to 18 points. So there's now three points away are between her and Jen for tying and four for taking the lead. So Miss Roseanne continues to be our conductor. Kelly says, I dare to be different. Laugh out loud. Jen says, laugh out loud, Kelly. <laughs> All right. Next question is also, oh, excuse me, is true or false? Katie called Branch unstable. Oh, lagging again. All right, but y'all are answering. Katie called Branch unstable, true or false? All right, everybody is ringing in with true. True is the correct answer. And the person who rang in with that answer first was Miss Roseanne. Whoop, whoop. All right. Next question is multiple choice. How many suspects does Walt have for George Lindler's death? Is it A, four, B, three, or C, two. How many suspects does Walt have for George Lindler's death? Uh, Charlie, you were so close to coming in first with your answer. And everyone answered A. That is the correct answer. He has four suspects. I'm trying to make sure what I was going to say doesn't give away something. I don't think it will. 
because one of the suspects is George himself. So Miss Roseanne got that point, taking her to 20 points on the board. Jen with 15. Sorry, I was writing Kelly's name on the board. So, all right. Roseanne says, sorry, Charlie. All right, next question is, true or false, Ty killed George. Okay. <laughs> so everyone rang in with true. But the first person who rang in with the correct answer is Jen. It is false. Ty, and don't don't anybody answer anything just yet, because the next question, you might give away an answer. So just hang with me. Kelly is saying, how come everyone is answering before the question is read? And then Jen says he was already dead. Kelly, we have been having issues with that all day. I think what's happening is there's a lag time between some people and it seems like they're answering before I finish the question and I just think we're not all in sync today. Completely. All right. Roseanne says, right, Jen. Okay. So... Yeah, let's not comment just yet because I don't want you giving away the answer for the next question. So, the answer to Ty killed George is false. And that goes to Jen. Let me give her her point. Now, Kelly says, gotcha about everyone answering or people answering before the question's over with. All right. Because I will tell y'all, I will, to me, I feel like I read the question and then there's still that four or five minute, I mean, five second lag before y'all start answering. So I definitely think we're not still in sync. But anyway, here's the next question and it is true or false. Okay. All right. Ty shot George. True or false? Okay, so everyone's ringing in with true, and that is the correct answer. Jen, you were absolutely correct when Ty shot George. He was already dead. Now, let me just look a minute the next question, make sure. Okay, yep. I can't, I can't comment a whole lot either because of the next couple of questions. But I can say, yes, Jen, you were right. George was already dead. So no, Ty did not kill him. But yes, he did shoot him. 
as we know, in the back. Now, the person who rang in with the correct answer first on that one was Miss Roseanne. So that takes her to 21 points. Jen at 16. Now, next question is true or false? George asked Ty to shoot him after he was dead so it looked like murder. True or false? All right, so everyone has rang in with true. Charlie, again, you were so close, my friend, to getting out of the station. <laughs> it is true because, let me make sure on the next question. Okay, it won't give away anything. Because it is true. Because George knew that if he committed suicide, then his family would not get the insurance policy. But if it looked like murder, then they would. Jen says, Roseanne, did you answer before she finished the question? I mean, again, it's hard to tell because we're, we're so out of sync today. Um... Because like I said, several times I'll read the question and there's still a, a couple seconds lag before anybody starts answering. So I don't think we're all on the same page. Or we're all on the same sync. Charlie says it looked like it on my end. Jen says it's okay. I just know that it's on my end then. Roseanne says I agree, Sin. Roseanne says my FEA may not be busy. Charlie says bad day. Roseanne says area. Um, yes, I do think that a lot of what's going on for us has to do with the fact that we're on, on Sunday and Sunday is a crazy busy day. So there's, and plus I do think YouTube is having a lot of difficulties. Um, I wasn't even aware of this, but the, the last couple of days that I was working, my husband told me that YouTube was down altogether. So, and I didn't even know that. Um, so and it's the holidays. A lot of people are home, you know, on watching YouTube as well. So, but anyway, the correct answer is true. He did ask uh, Ty to shoot him in the back after he was dead. So it looked like murder. And Miss Roseanne did get that. And I'm trying to think, did I give her that point already? Let's see, we got 20... No, I have not given her that point. So I need to give her that point. All right. So Mike, check my score. I've got Miss Roseanne at 22. And I've got Jen at 20. I mean, I've got Jen at 16. And that means we should be going on to... Uh-oh, something's, uh -oh, something's not right. Oh, yep, that's right. Because that would give us 38 questions, and we're going on to question 39. So, we are almost done. All right. 
Question 39, multiple choice. Ty did what George asked because he wanted what? A, part of the insurance money. B, to be a good friend. Or C, to save his job. All right, so everyone is ringing in with B and Charlie, just a second faster, my friend, and you would have had it. Um, and Viola, it's so cool to see you answering. Um, yes, the correct answer is B. He wanted to be a good friend. And oh my gosh, look at my face. What the heck? Anyway, um, Miss Roseanne, you came in first, so you get that point, and that takes you to 23. Whoop, whoop, Miss Roseanne, you are on the runaway train. It is all you, girl. All right, next question is multiple choice. Walt said he was going to declare George's death as what? A, suicide, B, unsolved homicide, or C, accident. Roseanne says choo. Charlie says choo choo. Yeah, see, I think we're we're just really not in sync because even before um, Roseanne, Charlie, and Jen came in, there was probably about a three second la um, lag between me finishing and their answers even popping up. But all of you have responded B. That is the correct answer. He said unsolved homicide, which. What's your opinion on that? Um, he told he told Ty that even the truth was too far fetched for him. Um, and I mean, technically, by law, it's not an unsolved homicide because. Clearly, if Ty is telling the truth, George really did kill himself, taking all those pills. And he came in, and Ty came in right at the end when George was dying. And George literally died in Ty's arms. But if Walt puts it as an unsolved homicide, then Don and Cassie would still get the insurance money. Jen says someone else can come up later and try to solve it. Right? Viola says it allows them to collect the insurance and says this makes it look like Walt lies. Right? So, yeah. I got a hamster wheel going on in my head. <laughs> it's going in too many directions. It's tough. Walt knows the people in his town. Like, unlike me, he doesn't have a notebook to keep up with everybody. 
like he has known them for so long that he knows every detail about them. He is, in spite of everything he's been through, he is a deep, compassionate person. And he wants no one to have to struggle. Because even when he has to arrest somebody, um, he gives them opportunities to help themselves, you know, so that their situation is not as, you know, doomed as it is. He gives people the benefit of the doubt. He thinks before he speaks. He thinks before he acts. I mean, he... doesn't make something on a whim. You know, he doesn't react foolishly. He doesn't react carelessly. And even with Ty, he was just, you, you could see him kind of processing. He's just like, wow. And he's standing there, hands on his hips, shaking his head, going, I mean, even this truth is just too far-fetched for me. And realistically, I mean, even if he took Ty in, he's got to explain to somebody this far-fetched story and there's too many loopholes. So I don't know if he did the wrong thing, but I can see the chat going. Burr, burr, burr. So let's see what you guys are saying. Jen says there's one on the screen too. What? There's one on the screen too. Laugh out loud. What is that? What do you mean by that? I'm missing something. Charlie says they need the money. Tell me what you meant by that. Jen, there's one on the screen, too. Laugh out loud. All right. Charlie says they need the money. Jen says it doesn't matter if they need the money. It's still wrong to lie about it. This is correct. Roseanne says that's true, Jen. Jen says a hamster will, too. Right? Um, I guess the thing with Walt, to me, though is I see him or I've always seen him as someone with high morals and always doing the right thing, which is why I love his character and why I think he has always been the best candidate for sheriff because of the fact that he does not react compulsively, you know, he, he's, he's not compulsive, you know, when, when he responds to something like he thinks things through so many times, Vic, Ferg and Branch, even Henry, but I really don't even want to put Henry in that because Henry also is a wise soul. Like Henry doesn't necessarily jump to conclusions either. But he does more so than Walt does. But Ferg and Vic and Branch have always, throughout numerous scenarios, been quick to assume something because they're basing a decision off of what's right here. But Walt, y'all, my coffee is so cold now. <laughs> Walt has the ability to really see through the peripheral and the perimeter, you know, he can, he can pan out the perimeter so that he sees more to a situation than they do. And therefore, again, helps him always give that higher moral conduct. But yeah. I kind of agree with you, Jen. 
And the question is, what would I do in that situation? Because I like to tend to think that, I mean, I'm accused a lot of being that person that lives by the book, you know, even as a manager, everyone already knew kind of how I was going to respond to situations because I always did things by the book. If the, if the policy said this is wrong, then it was wrong. But you do sometimes have to take in the situation. Did the person do something intentionally in error or did they make the error and not realize at the time that they were making the error? And as a manager, that was things I had to think about. But Walt knows. Now, does he have full proof outside of Ty's confession? No, he doesn't. Could he approve that in court? Well, we definitely know that David, I mean David, sorry, that George didn't shoot himself in the back. Could they have done an autopsy and saw all the pills in him? Yeah. So, wow. What are you guys saying? Charlie says hamster wheel for her too. Viola says, excuse me. But if Walt tells the truth, then George's life that he gave up was for nothing. Jen says, I agree, Viola. Charlie says, true, Viola. Jen says, but Walt doesn't want to make himself compromise either. No. Charlie says he thinks it's true. Charlie says he thinks it's true. Jen says, Charlie, he knows it's not true. And Jen says, this is a tough one. It is a tough one. It is a tough one. In the end, this is going to kind of make me sound not compassionate. <laughs> He's a leader. He is a sheriff. And he has to hold the same standard of law for everyone. And ah, he doesn't get to be the judge and the jury. And they don't really go, I mean, I know we're taking this a lot deeper than what the show is, is calling for, but we don't know everything that George went through, you know, we don't know all the details because the show was only like what, 35, 40 minutes long, 45 minutes at most. We don't know everything that led up to George giving up. We don't know everything that led to him coming into debt with the farm. And unfortunately, this scenario happens a lot in life where people are even convicted for a crime they didn't commit. It's just tough. All I can say is I am thankful that I'm not in a position that has to enforce law, but
Wow. We just went really deep. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Jen, uh, Jen says, this is a tough one, right? Jen says, sometimes that's unfortunate. Jen says, I would want that compassion, though. Grandma Anna says, morals versus law. Yeah. As for the character, like not true life, not real life, but as the character of Walt. Viola says his family is grieving and it would be devastating if they lost the farm too. Absolutely. Um, I think that's what Walt can live with. Um, because the hamster wheel that's going on is where, where does the character of, of Walt stand? We know that he knows the truth that George killed himself. And the truth of the matter is then Dawn and Cassie will not get the life insurance policy if Walt follows the law. The thing is, in that moment, he makes a decision. George is gone. There's nothing that can change that. And George has the mindset that that was ultimately going to happen. George made the decision that that was going to be his destiny. We know that because we hear it from Bob that this was not the first time he had done this. Even Ty knows this was not the first time because as soon as he walked up on George, he knew before George ever said anything to Ty, Ty knew that George was attempting to take his life again. And this time, George says, this time I took the whole bottle. And the, even then, Ty was fighting to try and save him. And George was saying, please shoot me in the back, make it look like a murder. And Ty was arguing with him. And then time was fleeting. And then boom, George was gone. And Ty was left even in that split second so really, Ty is in the same boat that Walt was put in. In all realistic reality. So in that moment, you have two men that appear to be of high moral character who made decisions. Jen says, Ty knew he was suicidal. He should have said something before. Well, absolutely. Um, George should have been taken to a place to have gotten help. Um, and as a good friend, which is what Ty wanted to be, would have found out from George, why, why are you so, you know, set on giving up? And then could have found out about the debt. And, you know, things could have been done. I mean, Cassie knew all they had to do was get the harvest out. Okay. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a very tough, it's, it's just all tough. I do know this. If I put myself in tie shoes... I can tell you that I would have never pulled the trigger. I would have never, even, even though my friend was dead, I couldn't do that. But in Walt's shoes, I can't tell you what I would do. I would like to tell you that I'm a by the book person. But I have a big heart. I see you cry, I'm going to cry. I see you throw up, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I'm a very compassionate person. 
And I would have to be in that moment before I could truly tell you what I would do. But I know this, that whatever decision I would make would be one that I could continue living, carrying. And I think I can tell you what I would do. Being who I am, I would probably have to tell the truth. But then I would fight hard to come up with ways and means to help Don and Cassie save the farm. Whatever it took. Helping them with the harvest, fundraisers, crocheting and selling. Um, I think that that's what I would do. a tough decision even even though this is not real even though this is just a, a show a movie it it does bring up good moral values and principles grandma anna says i was taught not to cry so now it's hard for me to cry but I do have empathy. Jen says, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. I say I don't, but I think I do. I think for me, I would have to be truthful. But then as the sheriff, I would do everything it takes to help them succeed. I would, I would pull my close knit town that, that clearly Walt has, I would pull them together to help this family. And as far as Walt's character, Jen, you talked about a minute ago that, this shows that Walt can lie. Well, we already know that Walt's not a perfect man. We already know that he has flaws. Um, we just don't know what all of them are because they haven't been uncovered yet. Um, but we know that he's not made always the right decisions when it came to his wife's death and even things with Katie, because basically he lied to Katie most of her life about her mom's death to begin with. So does that make him a bad person? No, I just think he made decisions based on trying to protect people. Okay, let me see what y'all are saying. Then we're going to move on. That got really, really deep. Grandma Ennis, I agree with you. Jen says, yes, me too. Start a GoFundMe, right? Viola says, I hate lies and lying, but I would not want them to lose the insurance or Ty being blamed for shooting him. Right. I agree, Viola. I'm hesitant because I've also been taught whether good intentions are, how does it say, um, a road is always paved with good intentions, but at the end of the day, we're still held accountable for the things we say and do. And I also have that phrase running through my head. Don't do the crime if you don't want to do the time. So, yeah. Kind of goes back to what Anna said. It's morals versus law. Whew. 
I just pray none of us are ever in that situation that we ever have to make that decision. That's for sure. That I'm 100% on. Jen says, I'm not sure that I think this is a flaw per se. Jen says he's human. Charlie says, yes, Jen. Charlie says, or yes, Jen. Grandma Anna says, the road to hell is paved with, ah, that's what it was. Yes, yes. Thank you, Anna. No, I don't think this is a flaw for him. Um, I again think that even this situation shows that Walt was still the best candidate for sheriff over Branch. Because Walt is still taking a chance on his character. Because like you said, Jen, somebody else can come back and solve this. And if they do, it puts Walt in a light. So Walt's taking a huge risk and trying to secure the future for Dawn and Cassie. So, and again, I don't think Walt reacts to anything, you know, quick. So I think he's fully well aware of the consequences of his decision both the good and the bad. And this is what I know or have come to know about the character of Walt as a character. Not the actor in real life, but the character. Um, he will always take responsibility for his actions. So. And going back to what Viola is saying. At that point, they'll have the insurance. Now, I've seen where insurance companies will make somebody pay something back, but a lot of times they can go to court, and a lot of times, nine out of ten times, they'll win it and not have to pay it back. But anyway, so whew, let's let's go on. All right, let's see. Let's see. Viola says, for sure. Grandma Anna says, my sister just lied to me because she didn't want me to worry. She told me she had a sinus infection when she actually had COVID. But my sister is not a liar. Right. She was protecting you. Um, and you're right. That doesn't make her a bad person. It's kind of the same situation. Jen says, yes, Grandma Anna, but I don't want to be lied to even about that. Well, that's true, too. But Grandma Anna says, yes. Wow. Whew. Feels heavy, doesn't it? Life. It's all about choices. All right. Let me count, make sure I gave the point. One, two, three, four. That's 25, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. I did not. All right. So let's go back up. And Miss Roseanne got that point. Okay. All right, Miss Roseanne. So that now has you at five, 10, 15, 20, at 24 and Jen at 16. All right. We have six questions left. The next one, uh, excuse me, we have five questions left. The next one is multiple choice. What did Walt say when Vic handed him an envelope with his name on it? 
What did Walt say when Vic handed him an envelope with his name on it? Did he say A? Oh, we're lagging again. Jen says, can't you have a sinus infection with COVID? Um, it's not so much a sinus infection as it is um, like when you have a sinus infection, you sometimes can't smell or taste. You lose your sense of smell and taste. Um, short of breath, you have a cough. But you don't have like the congestion or runny nose part of the sinus infection. So I don't know if they would label it as actual sinus infection with COVID. <laughs> Grandma Anna says, shovel, Jen. <laughs> Jen says, in my humble opinion, there's nothing to forgive, only love. All right. Grandma Anna says, I don't know, Jen. Grandma Anna said, oh, and yes, very correct, Anna. Bad fever. Yes, you do get extremely high, high fever with it. Yes. I know this is going even heavier, but um, the last day that I worked, I got off Christmas Eve morning. And so I went in, it was Wednesday night of this past week. I haven't even, I hadn't even been to work, but for 45 minutes when we had an EMS come in with a 57 year old man. He came in in cardiac arrest and he was gone. And it was hard. That was a hard 12 hours right off the bat. It was death right there walking in starting to shift and 57 is so young but the one thing i can attest to with my job if nothing more is if you have to be out wear your mask COVID is real i know many people still think it's not or it's not going to happen to them but it's real and until we start taking it seriously then we still have a long fight. So Jen says she could have had the infection that led to COVID. And that is true too, Jen. Please add my sister Teresa right to your prayers. Roseanne says, wow, I'm sorry. Grandma Anna says hugs. Yes, um, we will. Let me, I'm going to write it down on this board here because I didn't bring a pen since I had the dry erase boards. All right, Anna. Is that the sister that has COVID? Anna? Just making sure I'm on the same page. Yes. Okay. I will add her to my personal prayer starting today, but I will do this coming Friday. What I did this past Friday, I'll just put out a video again of just the prayer request. So she will be um, added on that as well, Anna. All right. Oh my gosh. Yes, I remember that. She was saying that that's the one that she found last year through the DNA. And I don't know how many of you were around when, when she was sharing that. But yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes. Thank you for refreshing our minds about that. Um, Viola says, I will put your sister on my prayer list 
Anna says, thank you, everyone. Viola says, wow, finding a sister is great, right? Having a sister is great. I agree. All right. Now, moving on. Next question. Is true or false? Branch was waiting for Walt in his office. True or false? Jen says, I agree too. Grandma Anna says, I was thrilled to find her. Absolutely. Absolutely. As she was for you. I don't know anything about her, but I know you. And she's one lucky gal. That I do know. To have you for sure. All right. So our answers are coming in. And most of them are true. And we do have one false. And the correct answer I am going to I probably didn't, Roseanne. Thank you. All right, so backing up. Anna says, oh, thank you. I consider you all my God sisters. Absolutely. And Roseanne says, the last question you didn't finish about an envelope. Did you finish that one? No, I didn't. And I'm going to apologize because the question I just answered, the true or false one, so we're going to handle both of those, actually was before the envelope one, and I skipped it. So let's. Go back to the envelope one. Actually, I don't think I gave y'all the answers, did I? No, I didn't give you the answers. So let's actually go to the one that was supposed to be first. And I apologize for that. Um, the correct answer. Thank you, Roseanne. She says you didn't finish it. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because. Anyway, the correct answer, Roseanne, you are the only one who got that one right. Where it says true or false, Branch was waiting for Walt in his office. The answer is false. It was Vic who was waiting for him in his office. So, Roseanne, you get that point. It takes you to 25. Now, moving to question 42. It is multiple choice. What did Walt say when Vic handed him an envelope with his name on it? Did he say, A, I don't want to open this. B, I don't want to read this. Excuse me. Or C, I don't want to lose you. Okay, most of the answers coming in are A, I don't want to open this. And one answer for B, I don't want to read this. And the correct answer is B, I don't want to read this. And of course, if you remember, Vic had already told him that Sean wanted her to put in her two weeks notice. So that's what Walt is assuming this envelope is, is her two weeks notice. All right. Three more questions. The next one is multiple choice. Vic said that she didn't want to do what? A, write the letter. B, 
hand him the letter or C, want to be a deputy anymore? And the correct answer is A. That's what all of you responded with. She told him that she did not want to write the letter. That is correct. And Miss Roseanne, you got that point. Congratulations. And that took you to 27. And we've got Jen at 16. We've got two more questions. The next one is true or false. The letter was her resignation. True or false? The letter was her resignation. Everybody rang in with false. That is the correct answer. And the first person who rang in was Miss Roseanne. So she gets the point. Last question is multiple choice. The letter was about what? A. What really happened between her and Ed? B that her and Sean were splitting up or C that branch is unstable. All right. And everyone rang in with C. C is the correct answer with branch being unstable. And Miss Roseanne, you rang in with that answer first. So that has you ending episode eight with 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 29 points and Jen with 16. All right. So Miss Roseanne, you are going to be the decider of the six colors. But before we go there, real quick, I had a couple things for us to discuss. We don't have to go as deep as we did before with the whole Walt thing. But Sean and Vic, are they going to make it? What's your, what's your take? Anna says, congratulations, gals. Jen says, Jen says, yay, Roseanne. And so far, everyone is saying no. Jen says, Mike said no. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. And I'm sad about that, but... So, all right, we kind of touched on this one before, so we're just going to skip over it. And again, it was Walt and Vic, do they have feelings for each other? And we've already kind of talked about that at the end of last episode. So the last thing we're going to kind of talk about is, is David Bridges alive? What do you think? Um, Jen says, I'm not sure. It doesn't look good for Sean. No, it's not looking good for Sean. 
Um, Jen says, yes, she thinks that David Ridges is alive. Anyone else have any thoughts on that? Everyone's saying yes. I think so, too. I have a feeling he's alive. And I do think that he's kind of taunting Branch. But Branch is losing it. And granted, I know he's been camping out, you know, in the, in the woods. But, and so he's got, you know, the facial hair growing and whatnot. You can tell he's not been sleeping because, um, you know, he's been on watch. But he is looking rough. Really, really rough. So, and he's scaring me a little bit. <laughs> I mean, he's like losing it. But anyway, Charlie, like to see what you're working on, Cynthia. Oh, I I am working on my daughter-in-law's hoodie. This is the actual front side. This is the back side. So... That's what I'm working on. Trying to finish up her hoodie. Thank you. Um, the stitch is actually single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So that's actually what that stitch is. And that's what gives it that kind of tight look. But I don't know if you can see that with it being dark. I'm trying not to put it in my coffee. Although there's only a swallow left. But yeah, that's what that stitch is. It's just a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. It just gives it kind of a, a tight stitch. But yes, it's very pretty. That would make a very pretty baby blanket. Just that single crochet, chain one. So, and Charlie says, okay. Anna says, very pretty. Roseanne says, nice. Viola says, that's pretty. Charlie says, nice. Thank y'all. So, all right. So, our colors. All right, Roseanne. So we have six colors that we have to pick. I'll grab this, this dry erase board because I got more room to write on the colors. All right. All right. Anna says, I like the look of that stitch. Yes, it is a very pretty stitch. That's what I did all of the, um, the hoodies for my other kids in as well. And it, it is a very pretty stitch. Whether it's a solid color or not, I actually have. Let me see if I can grab it. Oops, I'm dropping everything. Todd, are you right there? Can you come here for just a quick second? Can you come here for just a quick second? Right behind me is Isaac's hoodie. Mm -hmm. Can you hand it to me? Mm -hmm. So here, that one I'm working on is for my daughter-in-law. And this is my son that's married to her. This is his. And it's using the same stitch. They're heavy when they're put together. They're very warm. That's the same stitch. It's just the different colors. So, and even the hoodie, which is dark in here now, but 
is done in that same stitch. I don't know if you can see it. That's kind of dark. But anyway. But yeah. That's it. But so that's what it's going to look like, but in that turqu turquoise kind of tillish blue. But anyway. So, yep. All right. Let's see what we got here. Roseanne says, number two, everybody pick one. All right. So let me write this down. All right. So let's see. Roseanne, pick two. Jen pick seven. All right. And then she's saying Charlie and Grandma Anna. Jen says, ooh, I like that. Thank you. Grandma Anna pick three. Charlie says, I like that. Viola says, love that. Charlie pick number 11. Um, Viola, you pick one, hun. Why, while Viola is giving me a number, is there anyone else on here? Besides Viola and myself? Kelly, are you still on here? Um, Roseanne saying, who's missing? Anna says, ask Mike. Viola says, sorry, was 12 chosen yet? No. Yes. <laughs> so Viola's picked 12. Yay. <laughs> That's the color I've been wanting to be picked. <laughs> All right. Grandma Anna says, no, awesome pick. Yes, I say awesome pick, too. Um, Charlie says, is that a paid pattern? Um, no, it is not a paid pattern. Um, why do you like the pattern? <laughs> no, I'm just picking on you. The reason I'm asking if you like it, no. I am designing it. I am taking different um, stitches and creating this. Um, and I do take a lot of time in deciding it. In fact, what some of you don't know is I actually play with my scrap yarn um, and I create some of the stitches to see how it's going to look. The only and the only hard part about that is my scrap colors do not look like the colors that I'm actually using in the blanket. And like I shared before, colors actually kind of change the look of the blanket. So it's really hard sometimes because even though I'm working the stitches out with the scrap yarn, I mean, it might be in like a a pink or a variegated yarn that I'm using to just see how the stitches look to each other 
And it's sometimes hard because when I then go put it in the tutorial using the colors that you guys have chosen, this looks different than the scrap piece, even though the stitches are the same, but because of the colors. But no, it's something I'm designing. And um, I spend way more time trying to come up with the design than I actually do doing the tutorials. Um, I'm calling it research, but I don't know if it's really if it's really research because it's not like I'm inventing the stitches. I'm not inventing the stitches. I'm just inventing the combination of how they come. But but yeah, it's not a paid pattern. So, but I hope y'all like it. That's been my biggest worry is that y'all wouldn't like it. But anyway, um, let's see. So, Roseanne says, Mike. So, yes, Mike could pick a color. Charlie says, yes. Jen says, oh, stop. It's great. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I do worry about that. Roseanne says, number six, if no one else chooses. Um, Grandma Anna says, awesome, Roseanne. Conductor of the whoop whoop train. That's right. You did so good, Roseanne. You really did. Um, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry, Charlie. Um, no. Uh, it is not a paid pattern for the hoodie. There is someone that um, I kind of, uh, give me just a second. I'll think of his name. Give me just a second. The Crochet Dog, D-A-W-G. He has a hoodie design that I looked at and I kind of took the makeup, so to speak, of his pattern and put it into these patterns because mine, mine are a little bit different from his. And Todd, I think in one of those baskets in your... Um, room the guest room is Megan's purple hoodie can you bring it here so I can show them that one so if you go Charlie through my videos and just like google hoodie uh, Cynthia's joyful creations dash hoodie it should pull up all of my hoodie videos and um, um, there's a link to the crochet dog or you can just google crochet dog and um he has a hoodie pattern that is free there's no charge um i don't know if there's an actual tutorial or if it's just the pattern i printed out the pattern i don't think i did a tutorial i looked at a tutorial but anyway long story short i took the basics of his pattern and created my own pattern. So this is the one that I did for my daughter-in-law. And I mean, excuse me, my youngest son's girlfriend. So this is what hers looks like. So it's got the hoodie, but unlike the guys, I, I created a V in the front because girls will be more apt to wear like a turtleneck or something either it. But so hers is different. And I have been debating on my daughter-in-laws even to change up the pattern a little bit. And on the side here, I've thought about doing the same effect up here and creating a V on the side. So it has a little bit of an open but I think in the end for hers, I'm going to leave it closed so that I did, I do all of them the same. 
and then going forward when I make some to sell, I might alternate it and open it up on the side. So anyway, so if you're looking for a free pattern that's written, the crochet dog, D-A-W-G, has a pattern. And my hoodies are done different than his too. Um, I actually took the way I do my hoodies off of um, another sweater that I had made. It had a collar. And one day when I was playing around with that collar and the collar folded up, if I create a seam across the top of the collar, it created a hoodie. And that's how I did this. That's how I came up with this hoodie was that same kind of combination of making that collar, but then I just made it a little bit taller and then sewed it up by creating a seam on the top. And you can kind of sort of see it running right there. But that's how I make the hoodie. So I have done a tutorial on how I kind of do mine. Um, and that's what I was telling you. Um, when I did my youngest sons, that's green and black. I actually did a tutorial on my channel, but I included um, the crochet dogs link in that video. And then I have a video of my um, middle son, my Marine, because he was the first one I did. He, he was the one who asked me to do it, um, to make a hoodie. And I did it, but he wanted his to have kind of like an Aztec Southwestern look. So if you go back on his, I created a solid patch across the chest. And then I embroidered um, in that solid chest, creating this kind of Western aztec -y kind of look to it on the front and the back of his. So you'll have to go check those out. And I apologize. I can see the the met the chat going crazy. So let me back this up and catch what y'all are saying. All right. Um, so Roseanne saying, yes, let's all enjoy the winnings. This is all in fun. Yes, it is. And Charlie says the blanket is very nice. Thank you. Anna says, I'm loving it. Thank you, guys. Roseanne says, one more color. Thank you. <laughs> yes, we do have one more color, but you said six. So if no one else has come forward, then we'll just do that. Um, let's see. Grandma Anna says, the baby blanket I'm making is from a stitch we use in the blanket, the Suzette stitch. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, that is a very pretty stitch. And it will make a nice baby blanket. I actually made one too. Anna, if you, I don't know if y'all remember, but there's a video on it. It was like um, different lavenders, uh, purple colors that I made it. It was a baby blanket and baby yarn. Okay, let's see. Grandma Anna says, I have six numbers. Anna says, Two, seven, three, eleven, twelve, and six. And then Roseanne says all the colors are done if I'm at six. Yes. Roseanne says yes. Viola says figuring out the stitches is important. My daughter didn't like it in the early stages, but loves it now that I have the Western look coming out early on. She did. I am so glad, Viola. She says she didn't care for your color choices. But if I remember correctly, though, all of you have just chosen. I mean, like I said, I've noticed in each of your blankets, like you each have like one color that just really makes your blanket pop. 
And again, I, I cannot wait for y'all to see what I'm seeing, but in the result video, I cannot wait. Y'all are going to love it. Y'all are going to love it. You're absolutely going to love it. Um, so if you've not been sending me pictures, that's fine. Just start sending me some so that you can be sending me pictures. That's fine. Just start sending me some so that you can be in that video. And uh, definitely, definitely, even if it's just one picture, because there is going to be a Longmire giveaway. So I need just one picture if you're making one. Um, so. Uh, Charlie says, okay, nice. Roseanne says, nice. Grandma Anna says, very pretty. Charlie says, that would be good. Um, Jen says, I like that. Charlie says, I will look just made my first sweater this year. Yes, they are a lot easier than I imagined. There's a lot that I've done in 2020 that I didn't think I ever would because it just looked difficult. And I've never been a quitter, but I've also never been one that doesn't try something because it looks difficult. Like I love the challenge for myself, but I did step out of my comfort zone a lot more this year. And I owe a lot of that to you guys and, you know, the support you've given me on the channel. It's, it's kind of pushed me to try more. And I'm really, really excited um, about some things that I will be doing in 2021 that are completely out of my comfort zone. Not to mention some things that I didn't do on my 2020 to-do list, crochet-wise. So, um, anyway. Not that I normally make a New Year's resolution kind of thing. But um, I did last year with my crochet. And there are two things that I did not accomplish that will be accomplished very early on in 2021, for sure. Yarn is already bought, so there's no excuse. Um, Charlie says, and a sweater top. That is awesome. Charlie says, we'll watch. Yeah, if you can, go check out those videos. Um, I have fallen in love with the hoodies, and honestly, they don't take as long as they look like they do. And I fully plan on making one for my husband and I as well. So, Violet says, I will look for your tutorial. Charlie says, log my work under, log my work under Mamie Luckett. So let me, let me write that down. Mamie, it's getting dark in here. Let's see. L U C K E T T. I will look that up. Charlie, too bad I cannot crochet myself a good man. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Jen says, Anna, Grandma Anna, that is funny. That is funny. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Viola says, same here. I will tell you something that I would love to do. And of course, it would be like separate from our movie stuff. But something I had thought about is um, the only thing is, is to do a blanket, it would get big and heavy, but you know, I, I recently 
saw a movie. It's an old movie. So don't think that I was just seeing it for the first time, but I wasn't. It was kind of like one of those, you know, reminiscing kind of days. Um, like we went back and we were watching Breakfast Club and St. Anna's Fire and Short Circuit, E.T. We were just kind of having a, a nostalgia kind of day. And one of the movies that we um, watched uh, was The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. So that's where this idea came from. So I was thinking about how cool it would be if Anna says The Salvation Blanket. Um, yes, I actually have that written down right here. We talked about that the last time we were together. Kelly's Crochet Adventures has a salvation blanket going on. And I've still got to check it out with the holidays. I didn't, I'll be honest, I haven't spent much time in the studio. Um, so I'm behind on emails. I'm behind on comments. Y'all, please don't hate me. Please forgive me. I do hope to get those caught up soon. The holidays, is it's just been kind of crazy. And my, my back does limit me right now. Um, which we'll leave that there. But anyway, um, so I do want to check that out, Anna. Charlie says, I'm finishing up my cancer awareness blanket in Tunisian. Oh, that's one of my to-do things in 2021 is the Tunisian stitch. Oh, I'm so excited about that, Charlie, to try that. I have not tried it yet, so I'm excited. Um, I played around with it and did like two rows once for a dishcloth, but that's it. So I don't really count that as doing anything with it because I didn't really go anywhere with it. But I definitely want to. Um, I have bought two Tunisian hooks, so I'm excited to give that a go in 2021. Anna says, funniest movie ever, Better Off Dead. I have not seen that. Better off dead. Do you know what that's on right now? Like, is it on Netflix or Hulu, which I don't have Hulu, but. Um. Anna says a link. What does that link go to, Anna? Is that the salvation blanket? I bet it is because it says knitting Bible study. And I know that Kelly does Bible studies like me. With John Cusack, an 80s movie. And I, not, yeah. I love John and Joan Cusack. They are an amazing brother-sister team. Of actor and actresses. Okay. I'll see if I can find it. Sometimes I can Google them. And find them that way. And watch them. Um, anyway. What I would like to do. Is something like. Um, those who want to participate. Um. Instead of like the sisterhood of traveling pants, do something like um, either traveling yarn and um, we do like maybe granny squares or something. And I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. I'm, I'm going to think more about it. But like we actually send like a granny square and a skein of yarn. And let's just say, um, since Roseanne was the winner, I'm going to use Roseanne. So let's just say I started out. I create and we will decide like how many rows are added or whatever the project is. But just for now, because it's still in thought process and maybe y'all can help me. Um, because definitely more minds are better than one. 
and y'all's are way better than mine. Um, so let's just say we did it as a granny square, whatever we're making, but we're going to use granny square. So let's just say we add, you know, four rows. I then do it in a particular skein of yarn, but then I'm going to send it to Roseanne first. And I send it to Roseanne, but when I send it to her, I send a completely different skein of yarn with it. She uses that skein of yarn to add to the square. She then keeps that skein of yarn for herself to use with whatever she wants to. She then passes the granny square on to the next person with a skein of yarn that she's chosen. And then when they get it, they add to the square with that yarn. They keep that yarn and they send it to the next person with their choice of yarn. So anyway, I don't know. It just, I don't know. And then it will circulate and then eventually come back to me. But wouldn't that, I don't know. It just seems like that'd be cool. Something like that. So I don't know. I come up with sometimes some crazy ideas, I know. So y'all can tell me if that's just not a good idea. But uh, Okay, so that is the link to the Salvation Blanket. Thank you. When I get off of here, I will go click on that and save it. So I have it to look at later. Um, Anna says it sounds fun. In my mind, it sounds fun. But y'all be my sounding board. <laughs> Because I know I can come up with some crazy ideas sometimes. Roseanne says it sounds like fun. Viola says sounds interesting. Charlize says sounds fun. So, yeah, I'll have to keep working on that. And if you have any thoughts on it or whatever, please, please send me your input. Because, yeah, I think it would be fun. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, email me with any thoughts you have on it. All right. So there is a new video coming out tomorrow. Well, let me just say this. There's a new video coming out this week for the next section of the Longmire Blanket. It is not done yet. Just being real and honest. Um, I'm going to spend the rest of the evening with the hubby. Um, I did not expect this to be on this long. And I do apologize um, if I took up more of your afternoon than you wanted. Um, but I've had a great time, as always. And when he goes to bed, I'm going to try to do that tutorial. But if it doesn't show up tomorrow, just know I'm trying. Um but hopefully it will. But then the next one will not come out until two weeks from tomorrow. We don't come back for movie night, conversation night, Bible study until January 8th. It's a long time. So other than a couple pop-up videos, I will not see y'all again till the new year. Let's see. Oh, what's the, okay. Anna says, we could also crochet six granny squares, keep one, send skein, and five blocks. That way we all get a blanket. Jen says, no worries. I'm sure talking about the length of today. Roseanne says, good idea, Grandma Anna. Anna says, no, sounds good, too. Oh, wait, no problem. Viola says, Anna, that sounds good, too. Yes. Anna says, don't stress yourself, Cynthia. Thank you. Anna says, happy new year, everyone. Yes, yes, happy new year. Charlie says, check out Seta's place. She did a traveling something. 
I will do that. I love Seta. And I'll be honest, you guys, I haven't been on Seta's channel in a while. Unless she pops up and I've had a quick minute, for the most part, I have not been able to catch any of her videos lately. Um, partly because I have deemed Fridays as my big YouTube watching day before all my lives start. And I initially first start out checking out videos on my shout out subscriber. And I initially first start out checking out videos on my shout out subscriber um, video on, on those content creators that are on there um, trying to give them support. Um, so I will check that out, Charlie. Which I used to watch Seta all the time, especially as she, um, well, before, but especially as she packed up and traveled around till she got to Alaska. And then the first couple months she was in Alaska in, in Alaska. But it's been it's been probably about two and a half months since I've checked in with Seta. And I need to do that. Seta makes a lot, Charlie, she makes a lot of beautiful sweaters and tops as well. And she wears them when she's done. So love, love Seta. Viola says, Happy New Year, everyone. New Year's Eve. Um, Roseanne says, Happy New Year's, everyone. May our Lord keep you safe in his arms until we get together again. Amen. Amen. All right. So we are going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank y'all for such a wonderful afternoon. As always, I have so much fun. We did have a deep conversation, um, but it was still fun. I enjoyed it. And appreciate you, you know, engaging and being a part of it. And Charlie says, Happy New Year's, everyone. We have our six new colors for um, the next section. And that is 2, 7, 3, 11, 12, and 6. So, exciting, exciting. All right. Anna says, amen, Roseanne, right? All right, you guys. I love you so, so much. I am so glad that everyone had a wonderful Christmas. I hope that you have, as Roseanne has said, a very safe and wonderful and happy new year. I cannot wait to see y'all in the new year. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to what we're going to do as a group. So very, very excited and above everything else. Um, I love the fact that we're here for one another and that we encourage one another, lift one another up, um, pray for one another. Uh, I just think it's phenomenal. The caliber of people that you are. You are an excellent group of men and women, and I am humbly blessed to have you in my life. And my husband has even commented on just the joy that you guys have brought me that whenever I talk about the things that we're doing, that there is indeed an extra sparkle in my eye and most days an extra bounce in my step um, when my back is allowing it. But um, yeah, you guys are amazing. And what I love the most about you is that you're real and you're yourself. And that's all I ask is that you just be you. Um, Cause you definitely get what you see with me. So anyway, Roseanne says, love you all with hearts. Jen says, happy new year, everyone. And Anna says, love and hugs everyone. Well, you guys have said it all. Charlie says, very good group. Love you all. Yes, you are. 
And I appreciate everything. Like I said, that you pray for one another, you hug each other and love each other. And like Brie, um, which by the way, she sent me another message. So I really need to do a short little live video this week, um, kind of giving an update on Alex and including some pictures. I have some pictures of Alex without her hair. Her hair is gone. She um, was losing a great deal of it. So they finally just shaved off what was left. So I have some of those pictures, but um, was losing a great deal of it. So they finally just shaved off what was left. So I have some of those pictures, but Alex is back in the hospital. She um, got a stomach bug and is having a hard time fighting it. And then, you know, her grandfather um, also has cancer and he is not doing well at either. And he's not doing well either. And it is putting a lot more um, stress on Alex that here she's fighting her good fight, but yet she knows all too well that she's losing her grandfather. And <coughs> that's, that's tough. But we definitely also want to continue to pray for Bree and Alex's mom as they are on, you know, that front line with Alex encouraging her to fight. So, yep. All right. Carolyn Monroe. <laughs> and Anna says, I mailed her package. Oh, bless you. Thank you. <coughs> I've not heard from Bree if any of those packages have started coming in. Um, I also was able to get one out to her. And um, Grandma Anna says, chemo makes you puke bad. Yes. And uh, so, as you will see, even in the pictures, um, Alex is definitely a fighter. And again, if your butterfly kisses are nothing more than just whispering her name to Jesus, I know she will appreciate that so much. Viola says, so much stress and heartache for the whole family. Yes, Viola. Viola says, love you all. And Grandma Anna says, yes, V. Um, absolutely. Some of you should have... Um, gotten some happy mail from me and if you didn't it's on its way um, I sent it out about a week ago um, and because I know not everybody on here got or is getting receiving something um, with that being said it, it wasn't anything much and um, it was basically in response to different things that you've said in emails to me. So um, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that because um, I was the type of mom that my kids always had presents to give to all their friends that came to their party. So everybody got presents. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, yep. All right, you guys. Anna says, I pray for her every night. Thank you. I know that her and her family greatly appreciate that. Anna says, my mail has been a week late. Well, with the holidays, I'm sure the whole mail system is behind and running slower due to all the many packages they have. So, all right, you guys, it has been a wonderful, phenomenal Sunday afternoon. Thank you for coming and spending it with me. Um, um, I love you so much. I do wish you a very safe and happy new year. As always, be joyful. Stay crafty in your issue. A very safe and happy new year. As always, be joyful. Stay crafty in your own way. Make your own joyful creations. Find your joy in every day because it is there. And um, for some of you, your joy is literally coming in the mail. So that just tells you that it has something with joy on it or something that will 
make you smile and put the joy there. But above all else, I do pray for all of you. I do have your prayer requests. I do actually pray for them. Um, I love you. I'll see you in 2021. Hugs, everyone. Squeeze tight. Bye.